21, you're getting a live view of the inside of the International Space Station's Quest airlock. Currently USOS astronauts all occupying the inside of the Quest airlock. At the foreground uh, of this view, you see uh, J Japanese uh, astronaut uh, of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Aki Hoshide, helping out with some of the suit-up activities with uh, Megan MacArthur, who you see uh, on the right of your screen, NASA astronaut. And at the top is Mark Vandehei, NASA astronaut uh, who is the lead suit IV, uh, helping to aid our two spacewalking astronauts get suited up as they undergo the final uh, steps of their pre-breathing steps, which include in-suit light exercise and breathing 100% oxygen into their suits. The two spacewalking astronauts today include Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency. He is in the suit on the right that you see getting fitted with a safer unit. This is a simplified, simplified aid for EVA rescue. Also joining him is NASA astronaut Shane Kimrow taking on this EV-2 role, wearing the suit with uh, white stripes or the unmarked suit. The two are planned for a six and a half hour expedition outside of the International Space Station today to complete some of the work they started just a few days ago on June 16th. They began uh, outfitting the station's 2B power channel. This is a power channel on the far port side of the International Space Station uh, that faces the uh, uh, space, sp space facing side, the nadir side. You see on the far right of your screen is the solar augmentation plant. There are solar arrays, six sets of solar arrays that are planned to augment the station's existing power supply. Uh, they're working on the 2B power channel, uh, which is actually the Earth-facing side uh, of the International Space Station. Today is Spacewalk. They'll be uh, finishing up some of the work to uh, install and deploy uh, the solar array that's currently out on the mounting bracket of the 2B power channel. And they'll start some of the prep work to uh, uh, begin the installation of uh, a solar uh, array on the 4B power channel. They won't quite move it out to the 4B channel yet. They'll just uh, get it uh, unbolted from the flight support equipment in preparation for another spacewalk that's scheduled uh, for later in the week, currently June 25th, to complete the work on the 4B channel. The solar arrays themselves were delivered recently on SpaceX CRS-22. Folded in half uh, and when fully deployed, uh, the part of the today's procedures will be unfolding them. Uh, they'll be 15 feet wide. Then when they actually deploy and roll up the uh, solar array, they'll shadow most of the existing solar arrays and extend 60 feet upward. Once fully extended, they'll be able to generate about 20 kilowatts of energy. With the six planned as part of this augmentation plan, this will provide an additional 120 kilowatts of power to the International Space Station. You see in the background there, Megan MacArthur getting uh, Thomas Pesquet fitted into the uh, crew lock. Pesquet will take the EV-1 position. It'll be his responsibility to open the hatch and the thermal cover. He'll also be the first one to exit for today's spacewalk. Coming into the frame now, Aki Hoshide carrying another safer unit. Again, simplified aid for EVA rescue. This provides propulsion to the astronauts should they become untethered. But you see the tethered are configured on their body restraint tether on the forward end of their spacesuits now. Uh, they'll do a tether check before exiting the uh, spacecraft and remain tethered throughout the duration of today's six and a half hour planned spacewalk. Today's work sites are out on the Port 6 truss. They'll be making their way out of the Quest airlock and along the Port 6 truss. They're awaiting on the 2B power channel. The 2B channel work site you see on the far right of your screen uh, on the tip of a mounting bracket, which were installed on spacewalks earlier this year, completed in March. Uh, there is a solar array waiting for them. It is in a folded configuration and a temporary stowed position. After attempting to deploy it on the previous EVA, uh, they were unable to deploy 
you by the end of the spacewalk, a little bit of configuration and uh, troubleshooting some of those steps from the previous spacewalk. The teams are ready to execute the procedures today to unfold the uh, array that's at that 2B channel worksite and uh, deploy it as part of today's procedures. Here is the array currently uh, in its uh, folded position. This is what it looks like out at the work site. Again, it's in a temporary stowed position. Part of the procedures will be to hard mate it to the mounting bracket, uh, followed by unfolding it and uh, uh, torquing some pins that are in the middle of the solar arrays to keep it in that unfolded position. Uh, there are two bolts that need to be unscrewed uh, in order to deploy the 60-foot solar arrays that will extend uh, while the two spacewalkers are out at the work site. Once the, piece, the work out of the P6 truss is complete, the 2B channel and the 4B channel that they'll complete later in the week and, of course, start the preparations for uh, during today's spacewalk, uh, they'll be working with some of the modification kits. You see uh, with the CAD drawing off on the left side of your screen was a modification kit that was mounted to the mast canister of both the 4B and the 2B work sites where they're uh, installing the two solar arrays that deli were delivered recently on SpaceX CRS-22. Uh, again, there is a solar array out at the mounting bracket of the 2B channel. The other solar array is currently at the tip of the robotic arm on a uh, flight support equipment. They'll be working to unbolt some of the, uh, some of the bolts that are keeping it restrained to that before uh, ingressing for today's spacewalk, uh, and they'll address that uh, solar array at the last spacewalk, Spacewalk 76. This is a graphic of what the solar array will look like once it is deployed. Again, it is in that folded position, so this is what it will look like when it is unfolded. Again, they have a series of bolts. There are eight bolts that will keep it mounted to the mounting bracket, and another two bolts that will be used. Uh, they're they're uh, delicate pins that will be have to use the, the uh, spacewalkers will have to use a torque wrench uh, to unscrew those, and those two pins uh, will deploy the 60-foot uh, solar arrays. The primary task of today's spacewalk is getting that uh, solar array on the 2B channel deployed. Uh, that is the number one task for today, and that will be the first of their work site. They'll, of course, grab some uh, crew lock bags that carry some of the equipment that they'll be using out of the work site, including a pistol grip tool that will take up a lot uh, of their work, uh, driving a few bolts and even undriving some, as well as that torque wrench in order to deploy the solar arrays. And uh, with what time they have, they will work on preparing for the 4B channel. Again, there is another solar array that's out on the end of the station's robotic arm. They'll just unscrew some bolts, uh, getting a head start on some of the procedures needed to move it from the flight support equipment that's at the end of that robotic arm over to the 4B channel. Now you're seeing uh, Shane Kimbrough, EV2 for today, getting uh, outfitted with the Safer Unit Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. This is the final step uh, on the uh, pre-breathe procedures. They've, for the past uh, hour and 20 minutes now, been executing pre-breathe uh, procedures, breathing 100% oxygen and doing some in-suit light exercise, moving their arms, fingers, legs, uh, just purging the nitrogen from their blood. Uh, and allows them to breathe that 100% oxygen and uh, prevent any symptoms of the bends. Uh, they've been doing that for quite some time, now getting a head start, a little bit ahead on the timeline, getting an early start on getting into the crew lock today. This is the final steps, installing that safer unit before Shane Kimbrough makes his way into the crew lock, where Tomah Pesquet is currently positioned. The IROSAs, or ISS, rollout solar arrays that are being used uh, for augmenting the station's power as part of this planned uh, augmentation plan to get uh, six new solar arrays 
outfitted on the International Space Station, providing additional power for years to come and continue those scientific experiments. The same technology will be used at an outpost that will be orbiting the moon called the Gateway. The solar arrays on the space station are about 15 feet wide, fit nicely into the unpressurized trunk of the uh, SpaceX Dragon that delivered them up earlier this year. The solar arrays that you see here on this uh, graphic of the Gateway are 32 feet wide, more than twice as wide. They'll be providing about 30 kilowatts of power each uh, when the Gateway is in its final configuration. That will be an outpost around the moon uh, as part of NASA's Artemis program to create a sustained human presence around and on the lunar surface. And we'll be getting a taste of that technology today once the uh, two spacewalking astronauts, again, that's Thomas Pesquet taking the EV-1 position and Shane Kimbrough, who you're seeing on your screen now, EV-2. They'll be deploying the first of the six planned solar arrays uh, that will augment the station's power. The U.S. OS astronauts you see in the frame, Aki Hoshide off to the left of your screen, and Megan MacArthur making the final push of Shane Kimbrough into the crew lock. They have a direct line of communication with the spacewalking astronauts now. They are the, taking the primary job of getting, getting them configured. With the assistance of three U.S. OS astronauts in the uh, station's equipment lock, uh, from left to right, uh, Mark Van de Hei, Aki Hoshide, and Megan MacArthur, all unsuited and aiding the two spacewalking astronauts in the final steps of getting them pushed into the station's crew lock. They'll be moving all of their equipment and umbilicals and tethers out of the way, making sure they're in a good configuration as Kimbrough and uh, Pesquet will remain in this position as the USOS astronauts close the hatch between the equipment lock and the crew lock. The next steps here are the depressurization sequence. You'll hear a lot of the uh, tether configurations being uh, uh, 
identified through the space to ground communications, making sure that tethers are in a good configuration before they exit the hatch. They'll have a series of steps to control station's water and power supply now being provided to the suits through umbilicals once they switch the suits over to battery power. That'll be the official start time of today's spacewalk. For those just joining, you're getting a live look at the inside of the International Space Station. At the forward end of the frame here is uh, JAXA astronaut, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Aki Hoshide. Behind him is NASA astronaut Mark Van Hyde taking the lead as the suit uh, IV, or the lead for getting our two spacewalking astronauts ready for today's spacewalk. And in the background, uh, pushing the uh, two spacewalks, uh, spacewalkers into the crew lock and getting all of the tethers, umbilicals, and equipment configured. Uh, before closing the hatches, NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur. Our two spacewalking astronauts today are Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency taking the EV-1 position. He'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes on the thighs. And NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough, EV-2. He'll be wearing the suit with the white stripes or the unmarked suit. Uh, both of them will be completing the work on the 2B power channel. There is currently an IROSA 
ISS Rollout Solar Array that's positioned on a mounting bracket on the 2B channel. That's the Earth-facing side on the station's uh, farthest port truss. It is in a folded position and a temporary stow position. The two spacewalking astronauts will complete the installation, unfold it, and deploy the 2B power channel's ISS rollout solar array. They'll also begin some of the prep work uh, to unbolt the solar array that's currently at the end of the station's robotic arm. That solar array will be used to upgrade the station's 4B channel. Uh, though they won't move the solar array out to that position during today's spacewalk, they'll do it on a future spacewalk currently scheduled for Next uh, Friday, the 25th, they'll move the uh, solar array from the end of the station's robotic arm to its position on the 4B channel and deploy it, uh, completing the sequence of upgrading the P6 truss, the two solar arrays you see at the far right of this graphic. NASA astronaut Mark Van de Heij, currently using a communications tool. He has a direct line of communication with the two spacewalking astronauts, making sure they're all set and ready to go as NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur closes the hatch between the equipment lock and the crew lock. Now that everything is configured on the back end of that hatch, all their tethers are in a good configuration, the umbilicals are out of the way, and they have all the equipment that they need for today's spacewalk. Uh, they'll be closing the hatch and entering into the depressurization sequence. Then I will take the lead of walking those astronauts through the first part of the depressurization sequence. Uh, from here in the room, Jenny Seide will take the role of the ground IV. You'll be hearing her voice from here in Mission Control Houston, Canadian Space Agency astronaut. She'll be the one walking our two spacewalking astronauts through today's steps. You're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where there is currently a handover period. Flight Director Adi Bulos has been working with the flight control teams getting our two spacewalking astronauts ready for today's spacewalk. He's uh, currently about to hand it over to uh, Flight Director Ron Spencer, you see at the far right of your screen. He'll be leading the teams for today's spacewalk. Josh Kutrick is the today's uh, Capcom. He was leading the uh, the uh, astronauts through the first part of their procedures, uh, and you see Jenny Seide there next to Josh Kutrick at the cap composition standing up. Uh, she will be the voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control Houston. Her job is the ground IV. It's the voice of Mission Control. As all the teams are working through the various procedures of today's spacewalk, she'll be the one translating that up to the two spacewalking astronauts. Again, Thomas Pesquet from the European Space Agency and Shane Kimbrough, NASA astronaut. Airlock on one and steps 72 and 73 are completed. Got it out, Mark. We're going to put uh, the subsequent steps into work and I'll give you a call when they're done. Okay, we're standing by in step 77. A firm. Going back to the room correction, uh, Flight Director Marcos Flores is the Flight Director of the Orbit 1 shift. He was leading the teams uh, for walking the astronauts through the pre-breathe procedures, getting them set up and ready to go into the crew lock, which is now the hatches is closed. He's handing over to Flight Director Ron Spencer. You see uh, NASA astronaut Drew Foistel next to Jenny Seide. Jenny, again, is the ground IV for today. Her voice will be used uh, to communicate all of the procedures up to the two spacewalking astronauts. Drew Foistel will be the CAPCOM. It'll be his job to talk to the crew on the inside of the International Space Station.
Station, East Channel 1. Step 76 is complete. Your go for Step 77. Jane, on the UIA, switch the deep press pump. Check the switch. Deep press pump power is off. Press pump power is off. Check the deep press pump. Enable LED is on. Enable LED is on on the deep press pump. Copy. Houston, airlock on one. Looking for your go in step 80. Copy, stand by one. And station Houston, probably be uh, just a few more minutes. We're going through the go for for a deep press poll here momentarily, and then we'll be giving you the new team to take you through the deep press. Copy, thanks. On your screen, you're seeing NASA astronaut uh, Mark Van de Hei. He's uh, walking the crew on the other side of the hatch. That's uh, Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough through the steps to get ready for opening the hatch and beginning today's spacewalk. On the ground, the voice you were hearing was Joshua Kutrick. He's the Capcom for the Orbit One teams. The teams now are currently pulling a go for depress, making sure the suit, the station, and all the procedures, all the teams are ready for depressurizing the station's uh, vestibule on the other side of that hatch. The crew lock. Uh, that won't begin today's spacewalk officially. Uh, it'll depressurize down to five pounds per square inch uh, and then uh, uh, hold at five PSI. Make sure that there are no leaks. They'll do a short leak check. Make sure everything is good to proceed down to vacuum and they'll begin today's spacewalk once they switch to battery power. And the team is here in Mission Control for the Orbit One team pulled go for proceeding uh, with depressurization. They'll now, they're now in the middle of a handover period to hand over to the Orbit Two team, where Flight Director Ron Spencer will lead the teams through the duration of today's six and a half hour planned spacewalk uh, to finalize the installation and deploy a solar array, the IROSA, that's out on the, pow on the station's 2B power channel. Again, on board the International Space Station, NASA astronauts Mark Van de Hei there in the foreground. And in the background, uh, NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur waiting patiently for the teams here in Mission Control Houston to hand over to the teams that are taking over for the duration of today's spacewalk. Led by Flight Director Ron Spencer, uh, there is a team here uh, ready to take our two spacewalking astronauts, Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough, through the six and a half hour planned spacewalk to finalize the deployment, uh, the installation and deployment of a solar array that's out of the 2B power channel. They will take the two spacewalking astronauts uh, to, through the first, the final steps to depressurize uh, the station's uh, or the crew lock's vestibule. 
uh, that's on the other side of that hatch. The crew lock itself will depressurize from uh, the same pressure of the International Space Station, just above 14 pounds per square inch, about 14.2 is what it's sitting at now, and then we'll bring it down to 5 pounds per square inch, 5 psi, to perform a leak check. The spacewalk will officially begin when the suits are switched to battery power. Some of the configuration you're, you're hearing uh, from the crew, or that you have heard recently from the crew, uh, was configuring some of the switches that are on the umbilical interface assembly. Uh, this is on the inside of the crew lock where the two spacewalking astronauts are now. Uh, this is uh, Their suits now are connected by umbilical to the International Space Station itself, providing data and power, some cooling, uh, all through that umbilical unit. Uh, once they uh, switch to battery power, they will able to disconnect from relying on the station's data power and uh, water systems, uh, and they'll be free to move about the outside of the International Space Station. For those just tuning in, uh, NASA astronaut Mark Van Hut, you see to the left of your screen in the foreground, and NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur patiently waiting uh, for the uh, uh, ground teams here in Mission Control Houston to hand over to the Orbit 2 teams, led by Flight Director Ron Spencer. It'll be the teams here that will lead uh, the spacewalking astronauts and the crew inside through the remainder uh, of today's spacewalk and, of course, all of the activities happening inside the International Space Station. Teams should be wrapping up their handover procedures now. We'll be hearing some calls up to the crew on board the International Space Station, handing over to the new teams, and the crew will be able to continue walking the two spacewalking astronauts on the other side of the hatch. The hatch is now closed. Uh, on the other side of that hatch, Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough also patiently waiting for the next steps uh, to configure their suits using the umbilical interface assembly uh, to uh, switch over to battery power, configure their suits, and make sure everything is set as the uh, the crew lock depressurizes once it's given a go. Ground teams have pulled uh, and are go to begin that depressuriz depressurization sequence, uh, which is set to begin shortly after communications is reestablished with the crew patiently awaiting inside the equipment lock.
Kellogg Houston on one, you have a go in step 80. Copy Jenny, go in step 80. We will step onto the crew lock depress card. Concur. And Tama, as you heard, we have a go for the crew lock uh, depress cue card, so we'll start in step one, and I'll take you through to step 14 before handing over to Jenny. So in step one, Shane, on the UIA, switch the depress pump power to on. You're going to wait 10 seconds for complete startup. Okay, depress pump power switch is on. After 10 seconds has elapsed, you can take the depress pump man ISO valve to open. Expect an alert tone. Okay, there's 10 seconds. I'm going to fill open with the ran also well. It's open. Okay, you can expect an alert tone. Monitor your suit P gauge is less than 5.5. Copy, copy. And with just a few short steps and uh, handing over to the Orbit 2 teams, you heard Jenny Seide, the ground IV from here in Mission Control Houston. She gave the comm over to NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur, who's walking the astronauts for the, through the first couple of steps. Uh, crew lock depressurization has begun. We're now down to 13 pounds per square inch. We're heading down to five. Once we get to five pounds per square inch, uh, the uh, crew will initiate a hold and we'll perform a leak check. Make sure everything is good to proceed down to vacuum. Now entering into a short handover period, uh, we'll be seeing incremental dropouts of station video and audio uh, as we receive those communications through the TDRS tracking and data relay satellites. Still getting some audio. The uh, crew lock, uh, where the two spacewalking astronauts are now, is currently depressurizing. Uh, we're just under 11 pounds per square inch at this time, continuing to look good as we proceed down to 5 pounds per square inch. This audio you're hearing is coming from the International Space Station. That is what depressurization sounds like. We're looking good. Now inside uh, 10 pounds per square inch, less than 10 pounds per square inch. Kids are on five. Okay. 
Nine Zero, I agree. Nine Zero, Nine Zero, Turn my lights on, Tim. Yeah, good idea. I was waiting a little bit, but I'll press up pretty good here. Take some old zero. Come on, Shane, when the crew lock is at 6 PSI, you can expect an alert tone. And when the crew lock is at 5 PSI, Shane, you will take the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. Copy, Megan. Copy. So everything looking good as the uh, crew lock continues to depressurize. We're now less than seven and a half pounds per square inch. You heard the calls from Megan MacArthur inside the equipment lock. The crew will have to manually switch some of those valves to hold the pressure at five pounds per square inch. That's a leak check to make sure everything is good uh, before continuing to depressurize that crew lock down to vacuum. Depressurization of the crew lock continues to look good. We're now a little less than six pounds per square inch. We should be hearing a call from the crew that they've switched the valves momentarily. This will hold the pressure of the crew lock at five pounds per square inch for a leak check.
We're holding just a little bit more than five pounds per square inch as expected. Crew will now perform a leak check, make sure the pressure inside the crew lock is holding, make sure everything is good and all the systems are working before they continue to depressurize the crew lock down to vacuum. Throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, we'll be taking questions. Please use the hashtag AskNASA on uh, your favorite platform, wherever you are watching, to submit questions uh, throughout the duration of today's planned six-and-a-half-hour six expedition. The first question comes from Bob on Twitter, who's asking how long to pressurize before the hatch open. As you saw, depressurization from 14 pounds per square inch to 5 pounds per square inch did not take long at all. The leak check complete was only a matter of minutes. EV1, EV1 leak check complete and O2 actuator is in EVA. So it's going to EVA, I'm not yet, sorry. Yes. O2 is in EVA, EV1. One O2 actuator is in EVA, I copy. Working on it. Crew continuing to work through those steps. Depressurization sequence is just a matter of minutes. The depressurization from five pounds per square inch down to zero uh, will be a little bit slower, though they take it nice and slow, but really that whole sequence is just a matter of minutes. Again, the official start time of today's spacewalk will begin when they switch the suits to battery power. Another question from Mark on Twitter, who's asking, did they change the uh, uh, Shane Kimbrough's suit? The EV2 has O2 actuator in EVA. So Shane, your next is to take the depressed pump man ISO valve open and expect an alert tone. It's open. Okay, I'm taking the emergency MPEV to open. CP gauge is less than 5.5. And with a good leak check, just a matter of minutes, depressurization of the crew lock has resumed. We're now less than 5 pounds per square inch. This will be a little bit slower of a depress to get down to vacuum. Uh, but once we get to about uh, a half a pound of square inch, they'll be able to get the go to open the hatch and the thermal cover uh, and egress or exit the crew lock to begin today's spacewalk. But the official start time again is when they switch the suits to battery power. Another question from Mark on Twitter asks about uh, Shane Kimbrough's suit. Did it change from the spacewalk on Wednesday? The answer is yes. On Wednesday, the suit that he used was 3006. Today, he'll be using 3015.
depressurization of the crew lock looking good. We're now less than 3.5 PSI. We're going to about 0.5 PSI before we begin the next series of steps. You'll hear a series of uh, steps read from uh, Megan MacArthur, who uh, is currently has the comms here on your screen, reading the step-by-step -step procedures to the crew on the other side of the hatch. They'll be flicking some pumps and valves, uh, ultimately getting to switching the suits to battery power. Again, that's when the official start time of today's spacewalk will be. Okay, Shane, your next will be when the crew lock is at 2.0 PSI. You're going to take the depressed pump man ISO valve to close. Copy. 45 for now. PSI. Okay. The first phone man ISO is closed. I'll be saying it's closed. On the UIA, you can switch depressed pump power to off, OFS. Depressed pump power is off. Copy, it's off. You can report your initial tether configuration for egress. All right, so if I start from my left viewing extender, I see my red hook, close and lock, back on black, into my red wheel, unlocked, and I have the EV2's yellow hook, close and lock, back on black, on my red wheel, I see EV2's red wheel is unlocked. That's the EV2's red hook. He's on his left gearing, gearing extender closed and locked back on black. Okay, and I have a right waist tether connected to the airlock waist tether, connected to the airlock D ring extender, and all four hooks are locked. Okay, we copy your config, that's a good config, and I'm sure Houston will be checking in with you again. And Tama, as you know, when the crew lock DPDT is around zero, you guys can expect an alert tone. Megan. And Tama, when the EV hatch delta P is less than 0.5, um, when you crank it open, you're going to wait a second before opening and stowing the EV hatch. Copy. Got to self that you gauge right now. Two, one, five. Everything continuing to proceed as planned. And on one, we've checked the tether config. We agree it's a good config. Continuing with the deep press, we can expect about five minutes more, and we concur with your good words about the hatch, Megan. Thanks, Megan and Mark and Aki. Really nice work today again. Getting okay. us ready. Um, thanks to Orbit One and Josh, and uh, welcome on board, Jenny. It looks like we're going from a Canadian to another Canadian. Go Canada. Thanks. Go Canada.
The voice from here in Mission Control, Jenny Seide, will be the ground IV. She'll be the voice here from Mission Control, walking our two spacewalking astronauts uh, through their procedures from the Canadian Space Agency of the newest class of astronauts brought on in 2017. She'll be walking the European Space Agency astronaut Tama Pesquet and NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough through today's procedures uh, to install and deploy a solar array that's currently positioned on the 2B power channel. Airlock Houston, just a heads up, you guys have a go at any time for uh, step 81 to complete 1.225 when you're ready. We copy, thanks. As mentioned, the depressurization process uh, on the back end uh, after the leak check is a bit slower, slow and steady. Uh, as it gets down to vacuum, we're now just a little less than 1.3 pounds per square inch. The next uh, series of steps uh, will be right at about a half a pound of square per square inch. Uh, they'll go through the next procedure, procedures to switch their suits to battery power, and that'll begin uh, today's spacewalk officially. And we'll give you that time uh, once it is reported. In the meantime, keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA on your social, favorite social media platform uh, as we continue to go through today's procedures, getting ready to kick off a six-and-a-half-hour spacewalk to deploy a solar array. The first question comes from Risha Tosh, who's asking, why do we need to depressurize before going to space? Right now, you're looking at the inside of the equipment lock, where uh, NASA astronauts Megan MacArthur and Mark Van de Hei are sitting comfortably at about the same pressure you would find at sea level on Earth, just a little more than 14 pounds per square inch. Space uh, goes down to vacuum. But the human body uh, uh, is meant uh, to uh, operate in a pressurized environment, uh, so we make it nice and comfortable inside the International Space Station for them. Uh, since they're going outside, we try to make them comfortable as well, so we put them in a space suit. Though the space suits themselves operate uh, at about a little less than four pounds, uh, or five pounds rather, per square inch. Uh, once they get out of the hatch, that allows a little bit more flexibility in the suit itself. The more pressure you put into the suit, the stiffer it becomes. Uh, so they found this to be an optimum uh, pressure uh, for both uh, the uh, humans inside breathing 100% oxygen and the uh, rigidity of the suit itself. Alan on Twitter is asking, uh, when will we see the new solar panels open today and roughly what time that will be? Today is a planned six and a half hour spacewalk. Uh, the first set of procedures will be right out to the 2B worksite where there is a uh, solar array, an IROSA solar array, uh, temporarily stowed on a mounting bracket. The first set of procedures will be to uh, install it, uh, affix it to the mounting bracket by unfolding it and driving some bolts to secure it into position. We'll hook up some cables and uh, uh, right at the right time, uh, we'll be able to deploy the 60-foot uh, solar array out, uh, and the astronauts themselves will be out at the worksite while the solar array is deploying. 
We're expecting that uh, between three and four hours into today's spacewalk. Uh, once we get uh, the official start time here shortly, uh, that will take up again the first part of today's spacewalk about three or four hours in. The remainder of today's spacewalk uh, will be some of the preparations to get ready to start working on the 4B channel. There is one more solar array that was delivered on the SpaceX CRS-22, and we'll get that ready uh, and unbolted, get, get ahead uh, before uh, the next spacewalk, which is currently scheduled for for next Friday, the 25th, and the procedures for that spacewalk will be installing that uh, solar array onto the 4B channel. Shane and Toma, while we're waiting for the deep press to finish up here, um, as you guys know, we've been updating our procedure um, late in the day yesterday, and I do have a change that now would be a good time for you to copy. After you finish your buddy checks at the airlock, we'll have Shane lead out in the port direction because, Toma, you'll be dropping the crew lock bag at the port CETA cart and picking up an APFR, so it makes more sense for Shane to lead our translation this morning. Good morning. That makes sense. Happy. Jenny on the DCM, I have uh, LRP uh, at uh, 0.5 and on the uh, manual gauge, I'm around 0.75. Copy. So, Tama, I copy your... Uh... Tama, say again, you said you saw on the EV hatch a delta P of 0.5, but somewhere else you had a different reading? On my, on my DCM, 0 0.5, 0 0.4 even. And on the, the manual gauge on the outer hatch, it's uh, 0.7-ish. And Toma, we're showing a crew log pressure of 0.75. That readout uh, from the crew was comparing some of the data being displayed on the astronaut suits. Uh, the two astronauts are on the other side of the hatch today as the other side of that hatch is being depressurized down to about 0.5 pounds per square inch. We're a little bit less than 0.7 now. Keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA as we make our way down to that mark. The first uh, question comes from Mike on Twitter, who's asking if Pooja Jisrani was the flight director was today, uh, or has she moved to the third spacewalk? That is correct. Ron Spencer is the spacewalk is the flight director for today's spacewalk, continuing a lot of the procedures that he is prepared for on the 2B channel. A lot of the work for the 4B channel will be done on the next spacewalk, currently scheduled for June 25th. Pooja Jisrani uh, will take over as flight director for that uh, third spacewalk. Grab an APFR on the port feeder cart, which means I won't relocate change APFR on P6 from uh, 18 to 38, but I installed the one I grab on the, on the port feeder cart in week 38 on P6, correct? Yeah, you'll just be dropping the crew lock bag on the port feeder cart like we talked yesterday, and you'll still be picking up the APFR on P6, but just because of those extra steps, that's the only reason we're having Shane lead. So no change to where you're picking up the APFR. Yeah, sorry, I thought I heard you say we're, I'm picking up an APF on the crew lock bag. Oh, sorry, on the 4 seat car, but I'm only dropping my crew lock bag like we said. Okay? 
Excellent. Yep, that's correct. And just because of that extra time, that's the reason we're switching to Shane leading. No other changes in that part of the EBA. Twenty seconds to hand over. We're now in a short handover period. Uh, we'll be seeing this periodically throughout today's spacewalk. Uh, as we lose video from the International Space Station, that video being routed through tracking and data relay satellites, they're geosynchronous satellites that provide the video feeds from the International Space Station orbiting 250 miles above the Earth, trans transmitted to these geosynchronous satellites about 23,000 miles from Earth back down to uh, here in Mission Control Houston, uh, as they as the space station orbits the Earth, it hands over from satellite to satellite, so we'll be getting these incremental uh, drops. We should be regaining it shortly, and we'll get a lot of good coverage for today's spacewalk. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Teams. On the far right, being led by Flight Director Ron Spencer. Standing up in the back is Jenny Seide. She'll be the voice of the ground IV role from here in Mission Control Houston, relaying the procedures up to our two spacewalking astronauts. The delta T less than 0.5, you are go to open and stow the hatch. Remember the one second pause when you have cranked it open. Okay, I'll wait uh, 30 more seconds to be sure I'm under 0.5. Thanks, Megan, and I copy the pause as one second. And we're still showing a pressure of 0 0.51, so we are very nearly there. We are going to wait a couple of more seconds. Okay, that sounds good, Jenny. On the safe side. All right, we got what we're looking for, and as Megan said, you can open the hatch. Getting the first views from the outside of the International Space Station, right at the top of uh, this middle part of the module that you're seeing here, is the hatch uh, that uh, is containing the crew lock inside of our two spacewalking astronauts. The hatch is open uh, on the uh, airlock after getting that go. We'll be seeing the thermal cover being pushed out uh, momentarily. Happy Tamal, the hatch is open. Great work. Tamal and Shane, you guys go be amazing. We'll see you in a few hours. Remember, you are butterflies with biceps today. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. And uh, see you in a while. You guys take care of our yourself. We'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Over to you, Jenny. Megan, you got step 14, right? Affirmative, I have the emergency MPEV is closed. Thanks. All right, I copy emergency MPEV closed. Thanks, Megan and Mark. Well done. Ready to pick up with you two, Shane and Tomas. Switch power to bat. Stagger switch throws. Expect a warning tone. Okay, if you want to go to bat. Copy Toma, check display switch functional. Display switch is functional, I got good readings and um, scrolling through my through my barometers. Everything looks good. Any twos in that um, good display. Copy good display on one and two. Shane on the UIA, switch power, EV one, two, off, 
and check power EV1 and 2 LEDs, all four of them off, OFS. EV1 and 2 powers are off, LEDs are off. Copy. On your DCMs, disconnect your SCUs, install your DCM covers, and stow your SCUs in their pouches. Work. Work. You're stowed in the pouch. DCM cover is on. Alright, EV2 is working on it. Copy. I have to roll over here tomorrow. Oh, sorry, I'm on your way, Shane. And we got confirmation that the suits are officially on battery power. That official start time for today's spacewalk is 6.42 a.m. Central Time. is in the pouch and I'm DCM cover is off. Copy Shane. Check depress pump manual isolation valve closed. Depress, depress pump man ISO is closed. Copy. Set your temperature control valve to max hot. Uh, you want to do max hot. Uh, second. V2 and max hot. Copy. Both in max hot, you can switch water on. You want the water is on or in. V2 water on. Check DCM blank and bytes off. DCM blank and bytes is off. EV2 DCM blank, bite off. Set your TCVs as desired. Please. Copy. Check and report your suit pressure gauge. Pressure gauge is 4.3. 4 EV2. Copy. Those are good numbers. Set your visors as required. We have over 20 minutes of eclipse time. Okay. okay, copy. With visors set, we are ready to have you guys head out the door. So, Toma, you can open the hatch thermal cover, and we'll get you to complete the extra steps. Stow the hook on the stiffener tether point and cinch strap until snug. Thermal cover. With the hatch open, we're starting to get a glimpse of that thermal cover opening. The crew inside continuing to walk through the steps, making sure that they are in the right configuration and all the valves are switched to the right configuration now that they are unhooked from their umbilicals and relying on battery power. Again, the official start time of today's spacewalk, 642 a.m. Central Time. At the time of uh, switching to battery power, the International Space Station was 273 statute miles south of Australia. And I'm opening your thermal cover to see. One, two, three, four, five, six lines. Copy, six lines visible. Normal cover is open and we go to go and or go ahead and egress. Affirm, you have a go to egress with crew lock bag one, 
and verify the forward hatch pit pin is engaged. Getting our first glimpse of Thomas Pesquet being the first one out the hatch today as the EV-1 extravehicular crew member number one. He'll be wearing the suit with the red stripes throughout the day's spacewalk. All right, heavy grist. See the forward hatch pit pin is engaged. Pin my BRT ready. Copy, Tama. Okay. can send the bag if you want. Okay, here it comes. You can let go. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I got it. Come on. Nice. It's on my BRT. Tomah, with that crew lock bag on your BRT, you can turn on your HECA and inspect EV1 and EV2 safety tether load alleviating straps. Okay, the HECA is on. I see. Copy. Green rail. All that getting strap seems good to me. I see no red. Danny, and I look at the one. Green rail. All that getting strap is good. No red. I copy two good inspections. We can go ahead and start configuring your tether packs at this time. So you can attach your yellow hook to the green reel on the forward external D-ring. Copy. My yellow hook to the green reel. The forward external D-ring is now locked back on black journey and the green reel box EV1 green forward D-ring is unlocked. Those are good checks. You can attach the forward safety tether green hook to your red reel, and I'll take your checks. Again, Toma Pesquet outside of the uh, Quest airlocks hatch. One of the first steps for any spacewalk is to check the tether configuration. Make sure all the lines are aligned just right, in the right order, uh, in the right reels. This was also a check uh, when the astronauts were first configured inside the crew lock before the hatch even closed. Uh, once, uh, and then once the hatch actually did close, uh, they did do a tether configuration. Sheen Kimbrough will do the same once he exits the hatch. Green hook is unlocked. The red reel is unlocked. Goes to my left gearing extender. Uh, red hook locked. Black on black. Copy. That's a good config. Now we'll work with EV2 safety tether pack. So you can attach Shane's yellow hook to the green reel on the aft external D ring, and I'll take checks. Yellow hook is on the aft green reel. Uh, gates closed, slider locked, black on black. The green, green reel is unlocked. Good config. You can attach Shane's green hook to his red reel. Copy, Shane, you're going to have to come out a little bit for me to do that. Okay, 
Very good. Yeah. Green hook to red reel. Green hook to red reel. Thomas Pesquet not only working on the tether configuration for his own spacesuit, but also getting everything ready tether-wise for Shane Kimbrough once he gets out of the hatch. There's one more astronaut inside uh, the crew lock right now. Shane Kimbrough, NASA astronaut, will be wearing the suit with the white stripes or the unmarked suit, taking the EV-2 or extravehicular, two, extravehicular crew member number two uh, for today's spacewalk. Keep sending questions using the hashtag AskNASA on Twitter. The next one comes from Florence, who's asking, why do the astronauts have to breathe 100% oxygen? Inside the International Space Station, they breathe a mixed air environment of nitrogen and oxygen. In the suits, the pressure is much lower, less than 5 pounds per square inch. So they breathe a 100% oxygen environment to operate the suit in a lower pressure environment. Why the lower pressure? It helps the suit be less rigid, so they can do a lot of the delicate maneuvers with their fingers and hands uh, that are required for the intricate procedures that are a spacewalk. You'll also notice in a 100% oxygen environment, their voices are a little bit deeper. All right, that's complete, so start coming out if you're ready. I'm ready. And Shane, just a reminder, you'll be egressing. Yes, and the large small will stay with the back. I see a large small on the bag, and I'm egressing with the bag. Copy. Tomorrow, let me get a BRT on this. Are we ready? Getting a first glimpse of Shane Kimbrough. Again, he'll be wearing the suit with the white stripes or the unmarked suit, uh, referring to his BRT body restraint tether. Uh, they'll be using a series of tethers uh, throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. The body restraint tether uh, has the ability to uh, carry a crew lock bag. You see Thomas Pesquet on the left of your screen. His body restraint tether is carrying a white box as a crew lock bag, carrying a lot of the equipment that he'll be needing throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. Shane, you can turn on your HECA. Come on. Yeah. Shane, you can turn on your HECA and you can close the thermal cover. If it doesn't stay closed, I have additional steps for both of you. HECA's on. Copy HECA on. The HECA being referred to is the High Definition Extravehicular Activity Mobility Unit Camera Assembly. HECA for short, really it is the high definition cameras that are mounted to each of their spacesuits. We may be getting some really nice, clear, high definition views from the helmet cameras. If not, there are backup standard definition cameras that we can always rely on uh, as we walk through today's procedures. He'd almost stay for a minute, but doesn't want to. We can... All right, tomorrow I think I'm going to get the wires. Are you ready? Yeah, we agree. Yeah. You agree? I agree. We can uh, prepare a long wire tie, Shane, and uh, let me know if you need words on how to attach it. Okay. 
Okay. And Jenny, I'm trying to get, uh, I don't know if you have Eka or that you get view of, uh, I think I'm on the forward side of the thermal cover. It looks like something has been done right here. Maybe that doesn't help closing it. See what I'm saying? Okay, copy, Tamar. We don't, we don't have your helmet cam, um, cam up yet, but we'll look into it. have your helmet views until we do buddy checks. So if you have a config that you're happy with, um, let's do our buddy checks and then we can take a final look at it.
Tomapa Skay in the suit on the left with the white uh, with the red stripes, uh, working with Shane Kimbrough, NASA astronaut suit with the white stripes are the unmarked suit. Uh, they're performing something called buddy checks, making sure all the tethers and the body restraint tethers, the crew lock bags, their helmet camera assemblies, everything is in a good configuration before they head out to today's work site, which is the Port Six Truss. Find half check from both of you as well. Drive, Jenny. Drive, Jenny, if you're getting on cameras, you want to you want to see that uh, what looks like an undone fastener on the thermal cover. If you guys are happy with it, we're gonna uh, we're gonna leave it here and continue with the EVA portion. As long as you're convinced it'll stay closed with the config yeah. set up. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna stay as it is. Yeah. Okay, so just a reminder, okay. Shane will be leading to the work site. Now that your buddy checks are complete, Shane, you seem to begin your translation with Tomas following. Okay, I'll be waiting, Shane. Okay. I'll come to that hand around where you are now and cut. That's orientation. So, yeah, that. In a bit, I'll be right behind you. And with good buddy checks, they're both of their suits look good in a good configuration uh, as they head out to the work site. Shane Kimbrough being the first one out, he'll be translating right over to the work site at the Port 6 Truss. Uh, EV1 or Tomapas Gay will make a quick stop at something called the Cedar Cart, where there is a crew lock bag waiting for him to pick up and head over to the work site to join uh, Kimbro. And you see my tether too. Sort of too far. I see your tether is right behind you. You're going to clear it? Yeah. It's, uh, if you lift your feet up, it's kind of on behind, and then rotate your feet towards the airlock. No, you're good. You're good to go. You're good to go. Right. Thank you. Now you're clear. Now you're clear. Thank you. We have about four minutes until sunrise, and I have a caution for both of you. All right, Jenny, we'll listen. Avoid contact with the deployed test cable, Zenith and Nader Cedar Rails. Tomorrow I'm on phase one. I see you back there. Right behind you. Going okay. up to see us there. And Shane, since you're leading our translation today, we'll have you pause to verify the anchor hooks are in a good config. Okay. Those will be under the FHRC.
Shane, you're looking for mile marker 9180. Got you. Good, come on. Tomorrow, look at the safety colors. All right. Your anchor hook is closed and locked on 3652. So, yeah. So Two, you, I think. Yeah, but my. I think we're a little twisted here. Yeah, Jane Luke, I think. That anchor hook, that reel should come back to me, but it goes all the way back to, I think, the top of the sea spur. So I think I'm actually strapped somewhere. I'm going to have to go back. Clear it. Copy, Thomas. I'll go back in a minute. You behind you? Yeah, it's, I think, coming from behind me, which is not supposed to be the case. I'm from where you are. Yeah. I think it's wrapped around something. Maybe I'm out of going back and... To move out to a work site, the astronauts need to follow a pre-designated path. Along the way, they have specific markers. You can see some of the numbers from uh, what you're seeing now is a high-definition view from that HECA camera. We're getting some good connection here. Uh, those tethers have to be connected to a specific reel for the work site that they will be primarily working on, which is, in this case, the 2B power channel work site. This is the uh, Earth-facing side or the Nader side of the International Space Station. Short handover. And I'm going to be on my way. Okay, great. Come on. We're in another handover period, losing video temporarily from the International Space Station as we hand over between the tracking and data relay satellites that provide the video coming from the International Space Station orbiting 250 miles above the Earth. Uh, right now, it is approaching uh, the western border of Mexico uh, over the Pacific Ocean. Now we're about to enter into an orbital daytime soon. I'll, I'll be there. I'll take a look. I'll see you. We're back with you. Doesn't look awake here, just retracting. Uh, yeah. Locked, but reflecting great. Better there. Again, this is uh, U.S. Spacewalk number 75 out of the Quest airlock, uh, uh, continuing some of the work done just a few days ago uh, on the 74th to begin the installation of the solar array out on the 2B power channel. You'll see some of the helmet camera designations. Thomas Pesquet on the standard definition camera will be using number 20, Kimbrough 22. This will be the fourth spacewalk in Thomas Pesquet's career, all with uh, NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough. For Kimbrough, this will be his eighth. On this, the 240th spacewalk, in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Still getting some high definition views. Uh, this one coming from uh, Thomas Pesquet's high definition camera. He again is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Uh, 
playing well today. We copy Toma, your green reel is having trouble retracting, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, Jenny. Yeah, I look good. Okay. Pop back good there. Yeah, now it looks good. All right, All right take a look at mine. Yours looks good. Should be coming out of my left side. So. Yeah, it's between your legs, so point your legs at me. Like that. Don't, don't rotate. Just straight pitch. Or I'll pitch you a little bit. Clear. Thanks, sir. Now. Great work, you too. Yours is on top of mine, but it's not a good shoot deal, I guess. I'll just clear my reel. And yeah, we'll keep an eye on your reel, too. Yeah. Copy. Shane, you'll be translating directly to the work site, and Toma, you'll be stopping at the port Cedar cart. I have warnings for both of you when you're ready. Okay, we're ready. Grapple shafts and curvet coupling in the teeth is a no-touch zone. There are sharp edge hazards on the empty rail attachment lug near the two Bravo IEA inboard and radiator corner and on the pit pins on the ticker and the sticker. Those both don't meet kick, uh, EVA kick loads. Once the astronauts reach certain milestones in their translation path, you'll be hearing these periodic uh, notes, cautions, hazards uh, along the way, just making sure as they reach specific milestones uh, that they attempt to cross certain thresholds. Uh, in this case, uh, this is uh, an attachment lug and a few pins uh, on the translation path out to the port six truss, uh, making sure that their navigation path is uh, very precise and uh, delicate at some of the parts of the international National Space Station, maneuvering very swiftly over these areas. Uh, they'll be making their way out to the work site very shortly. Uh, we'll be seeing uh, the glimpses of the rollout solar arrays that are positioned on the modification kit of the 2B power channel very shortly. Shane, your next step as you translate outboard is going to be to drop your green hook once you're on P6. Before crossing the Sarge, check your gauntlets are down. Okay, copy, Jenny. Gauntlets are down. Copy, gauntlets down on EV2. I'm going to port to the car, Jenny. I'm going to attempt to my crew back. Copy, Tama.
getting good views of uh, Shane Kimbrough. Again, he's in the suit with the white stripes or the unmarked suit. He's going straight out uh, to the work site today, passing the Port 4 truss. Additional solar arrays there. There'll be uh, one uh, solar array will be upgraded as part of the augmentation plan. Uh, that'll be on the Nader side. He's making his way out, though, to the uh, Port 6 truss. Uh, both of the mast canisters there, that's the sort of tin can-looking structure at the base of the solar arrays. Both of the mast canisters out at the uh, Port 6 truss are affixed with uh, modification kits. Now coming more clearly into view, the white uh, strut structures you see coming out uh, from the mast canisters. Uh, again, Kimbro will be making his way out to the Nader side. You can sort of see it on the top of your screen there. Uh, that's the Nader side, and he'll be making his way uh, out to the work site there, where there is an iRosa solar array positioned uh, soft docked on the modification kit out there. Shane, your green hook location is P6 handrail 5312. Getting some high definition views from Shane Kimbrough's helmet camera. Copy. You can translate to the mod kit. Toma, after stowing the crew lock bag, we'll check your gauntlets are down, and then you'll be dropping your green hook on P6. I have seven cautions for both of you. Okay, you can go ahead on the cautions. Don't Copy. Avoid contact with the deployed and stowed radiators. No sudden movements on the mass canister or mod kit. Translate slowly. Avoid cyclic loading. Battery adapter plate cables on the IEA are a potential snag. While you are both working on the mod kit, you cannot simultaneously impart loads. Sudden stops and quick grabs are not allowed, and there is a 30-pound max lateral load on the mod kit. Getting good views of Kimbro continuing to make his way out to the work site. Once you're at the mod kit, you'll be stowing the crew lock bag on the left lower strut handrail. And Toma, he's got a Sarge, I'll get a check gauntlets are down. Uh, I don't sit down. Copy. You'll be dropping your green hook on P6 handrail 5309. P6 5309 for my green hook. Good read back. Kimbrough has a crew lock bag in tow, basically a work bag that he's taking out to the work site. He'll be temporarily stowing it out at the work site. Pesquet has completed his task of stowing the crew lock bag that he towed from the airlock out uh, to uh, what's called the CETA cart that's on the truss segment of the space station, now configuring his tethers as he makes his way out to meet Shane, Kim Shane Kimbrough out at the work site, now getting good views of Pesquet as he makes his way out. And I'm at 5309. Copy, Toma. 
as Besquet makes his way out to the worksite, he's going to grab a foot restraint, tow it with him to the worksite, and install it right in front of the mounting bracket. Uh, once he gets it installed, he will be the one to ingress or enter into the foot restraint, and that's where he will be for the primary portion of today's tasks of unfolding the ISS rollout solar array that's out uh, right above Shane Kimbrough's head from this angle. Copy, Shane. And as a reminder, you'll be sewing this on the stanchion which is furthest from the mounting bracket or wherever is most convenient for troubleshooting. But keep in mind that we have a lot that we are attaching to these handrail stanchions. Okay, you said furthest from the market, not like the other day? Yeah, we suggest that you're going to be temp stowing it on the handrail that you're holding on to now, but the stanchion which is furthest from the mod kit, so near your left hand. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Copy that. Just letting you know those might be clobbered today because we got a lot going on. I understand. Danny, my green hood on 5309 and on uh, that resume my translation behind Shane. Copy, Tomas. Next up for you is you'll be reading to and retrieving the APFR from with 18. The APFR and with 18. Good read back. So I am right now. And Shane, the next step that I have for you is actually going to be to start pre-staging adjustable equipment tethers on the mod kit handrails. And it's looking like the wire tie from the cable routing task and that you completed in the last CVA, it might take up that entire wine glass stanchion. So we might have to have you loosen it a little bit in order to fit a small hook on that stanchion. What do you think? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll give it a shot, but if not, I'll loosen it up. Puppy. Sounds good. Um, and it's connected on the other end, so that's, that's okay. Hey, friend. All right, so from this one that I'm looking at, I'm going to the handrail, correct, with the small, small? With the small, small, you are attaching uh, from the left upper strut handrail to IROSA, and then um, with a large, small, you're going from the stanchion with the wire tie for the cable routing to the IROSA clevis. Copy. I don't see the levers. I'm not looking for that. That's the Copy, Tomas. Uh, 
Okay, Jimmy, I have the one from the upper handrail to the IROSA. In place. Copy. That looks great. We can see it in your helmet cam, Shane. We do have some concerns about the um, tether point in the clevis fitting a large hook. So do you mind fit checking that for us? And the clevis, is that that's pretty far outboard of me now? No, actually it's, it's uh, toward the center of the mounting bracket. It's the gold thing, which is pretty close to the adjustable equipment tether that you already put on the outboard side of IROSA. Oh, that. Okay. Gotcha. Yep, that's it. So you'll okay. be routing the large, small adjustable with the large hook through the clevis down to the wine glass stanchion with the wire tie on it for the cables. Okay. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a little tight, but let's give it a shot. Copy. And Toma, you'll be following the same translation path uh, outboard that you followed in the first IEA, or the first EVA, so that means a fair lead around the IEA corner and a fair lead outboard of your original APFR. That was great, Jenny, and uh, when the APFR being versus was extended, I actually didn't check before I pulled it out. That thing is going to be fine for the translation, but that's a change to put eyes on it. Yeah, that's, a, that's a stiff one, too. Copy, good checks. So this helmet camera view is from Thomas Pesquet. He's got the foot restraint in tow after grabbing it along his translation path or the path to get out from the airlock to the work site. He'll be ingressing it as part of the first procedure and they'll both, uh, Pesquet and Kimbrough, be using the foot restraint throughout today's activities. Meanwhile, Kimbrough getting a head start on some of the activities, working on a tether uh, between the strut that is holding uh, the IROSA solar array and the solar array itself. Shane, Shane, I have a warning for you when you're ready. Uh, go ahead. It looks like it's pretty close to where you are now. When you are on the outboard side of the mod kit, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and the protruding trunnions. Copy. Getting close to reef 38, Shane. Yep. See ya. Come on, let me know when you're ready for APFR install settings. Hello, Janet. A minute. Your best body position to be away on this APFR. So again, on the left, uh, Shane Kimbrough working on some adjustable equipment tethers. This is part. Of, these are part of the procedures that were added uh, to help secure the. Uh, IROSA solar array to the mounting bracket uh, after they were unable to do so on the previous spacewalk. This is one of the additions to the procedures to help secure it and align the uh, solar array. Meanwhile, on the right side, Toma Pesquet working on getting the foot restraint so he can get uh, some of the bolts that are needed. There is a single bolt uh, that will help to uh, release the rollout solar array. Uh, right now it's sort of folded in half and that'll help it to uh, unfold it into its position to align uh, nice and straight and level onto the mounting bracket. 
and niner on the yaw, correct. I tried to come through kind of on the inboard side towards the center of the mounting bracket and the outboard, and I could not Any of the APFR 38, uh, the paddles are out black on black, and the group tool and the top test. Copy. That's a good APFR install, Toma. And Shane, it looks like um, the config that you have with the tethers is good for now. We can adjust that later if we need to. Um, but we're happy with that. I think I was just touched on it there, but uh, I'll leave it there for now. And I think next is uh, driving the bolts, correct? Yep, that's right. You're going to be releasing the M bolts that you uh, drove to Torque on the last EVA. You'll be using your PGT for this. And as a reminder, it's a Bravo 7 setting, so you might have to brace yourself. Okay. I'm getting the ATFR. We don't have you in the APFR uh, to release these bolts, but if you need it, uh, we can consider it. And it's right here, otherwise it's kind of in the way. So let me know if you're good with that. Checking. Kimbrough get getting started with the pistol grip tool, sort of a space drill to release a series of four bolts. Uh, that will be needed uh, as part of the procedures to unfold the iRosa solar array. Yeah, I can. Tomorrow, I can talk you. I can talk you through that. Actually, your next step is to um, release the uh, R6 bolts, but we're not going to have you do that until Shane's released the M bolts. And Shane, EV down here, EVA continued to talk, and we are going to have you change that tether config. Um, so a go back to the large small hook, we're going to have you uh, swap the hooks on that AET. So that means that the large hook will be on the mod kit and the small hook will be on IROSA. But the handrails that you have it attached to are correct. Okay, And Jenny, can you remind me what the yaw is supposed to be for the PFI um, Relief 31? Checking. Kimbrough going to revisit the uh, adjustable equipment tethers that he used to tie together uh, the struts and the IROSA, the solar array itself that's currently positioned in a soft dock on the mounting bracket. Uh, this is one of the procedures that was added uh, to help to align the IROSA once it's unfolded to get it into a hard dock position and begin the procedures for uh, deploying it. Meanwhile, uh, Pesquet working on the adjustable uh, foot restraint. He'll be entering into the foot restraint to get just uh, access to one bolt uh, that's needed. Uh, one of the steps, once they are done driving some of these bolts, both of them using pistol grip tools or the space drills, uh, the next step will be to unfold the IROSA. We're continuing to answer questions using the hashtag AskNASA. This next one comes from Dan on Twitter. Some of the views you're seeing, uh, there are shiny mirrors on their wrists. Uh, that is for controlling uh, some of the uh, suit's uh, temperature control and other uh, configurations on the front of their suits. They're not able to see directly uh, those dials and, the, and some of the controls on there, and so the mirrors provide access uh, to view some of those controls. Before your next step. 
so I'm still getting an answer about that APFR ingress for Shane. And Shane, you can ingress the APFR to drive those bolts. Let us know if you have any reach issues. And again, this is Bravo 7. What's your head, Shane? You're right underneath the... It'll be too much? Yeah. Grab. I think, I think you don't have room to do it unless you... Okay. Unless you lean back a lot. Uh, uh, almost BRT. Yeah. That's a good call. Um, and Jenny, for R6, I have to be my PFR in Wave 31, so I'll put that ingress in work. Okay, copy. Just be aware of your head clearance with Irosa and Shane. JNRC Bravo 7. Any other settings? Counter 2. Bravo 7, counter 2. We're yeah. expecting 14 turns. The bolts should spring out when released. Copy. From this angle on the left, you can see Shane Kimbrough. He currently has a pistol grip tool working with four bolts. Those four bolts need to be unscrewed first uh, before Thomas Pesquet, you see on the right, can access his bolt. Now he's in position uh, right in front of the what will be the middle of the uh, IROSA, and he's got to access one bolt after Kimbrough is done with his four. And Thomas, while Shane is releasing the M bolts, another small change to the procedure. Since we're swapping between two sockets, which are on either of your PGTs today, we're actually going to pre-stage both PGTs, temp stowing them on the mod kit. So we have as written for you to release R6 next, but while you're waiting, if you can reach, you can temp stow your PGT on the right lower strut upper handrail. Oh, it's it. My back. I don't think I can get there. Copy. If you can't, there's no rush. We can do it after the R6 bolt as well. I'll do that. All right, trying to get a body position. We got the uh, M34 is out. Jenny? Copy. M34 released. Do you have a turn count? 15. 15 turns. M34 released. Work, Shane. Yeah. Other ones are going to be hard, just body position wise. Good enough. Copy, we understand. When it's, uh, when it's unfolded, you'll, you'll be in the APFR. It's going to be sweet. Got this other one over here.
Thank you. Just shut off kind of midway there, Jimmy, so let me crank it back on. Copy. Okay, Bravo 7, counter 2 is set. Good Mark read back. M32. Copy M32. From the helmet camera view of Shane Kimbrough, two bolts down, two to go. After he's done with his final two bolts, uh, Tomah Pesquet will be, ac be able to access the bolt that he's currently in position right in front of. Alright, 16 turns, M32. Copy, 16 turns, M32 released. I haven't seen the tethers uh, change, and it looks like it's nice and solid. Tether Studio Rosa. Yeah, I mean, it's minor loose right now, so I'll tighten them if we need it. Very good position. Okay. Three bolts down. Kimbrough driving his fourth and final bolt. Okay, we actually like how loose they are for now because that'll give us a lot of play when we try and get the alignment right uh, in a few minutes. Understood. You'll definitely be using your judgment to make sure that they are as taut as you want. All right, M33, Jimmy, about probably 15 turns. M33 released 15 turns. Toma, so, those are three of the four M bolts released, so you can ready your PGT. Copy, I got my PGT. I'm going to call and then uh, you for setting. Copy. Correction, Kimbrough drove three bolts, now working on the fourth and final while Pesquet readies the pistol grip tool, or the space drill, uh, to access his bolt that he's currently in position in, uh, on top of the foot restraint on the right of your screen. Bravo. Counter to 16.0. All right, 15 turns there on 31, which is, re which is released, Jimmy. Copy, 15 turns on M31. Great job, Shane. Those are all the M bolts released. We're going to have you temp stow your PGT now on the crew lock bag. Okay. Again. Go for R6, Jenny. Yep, you have a go to release R6, Toma. We're expecting 18 to 20 turns. The bolt will spring out when released. Copy. North. Copy. Be mindful that when you're releasing this bolt, uh, it is the bolt holding the free side of Irosa to the side which is attached to the mounting bracket. So we'll want to be careful with that free end. And you'll have a eyes on it. Uh, not yet. Let me start on this PGT and then I'll be with you. Okay, so I'll stop right there. Okay. A few turns for now. We copy. Kimbrode putting away the space drill that he's been using, the pistol grip tool in his tool bag. Meanwhile, Pesquet uh, driving his single bolt uh, on his side of the Irosa. Once this is complete, he will get out of the foot restraint, and together, Pesquet and Kimbra will work to unfold the Irosa. Copy, Shane.
Alright, tomorrow I hold my bill. So I'm driving R6. This is the release pull, so make sure it doesn't uh, unfold inadvertently, I think. Okay, firm. Flag on it. You ready? Yep. I got it. We agree. And Shane, if you could just maintain control of that free end when uh, Tomar releases the bolt and egresses his APFR, that would be good. Copy. I got it. I got 20 turns and the bolt popped out. So I'm going to go ahead and egress the APFR. Copy 20 turns on R6 bolt popped out. We agree you can egress the APFR and again you'll be temp stowing your PGT on the right lower strut upper handrail. Shane, you'll be staying in this config until Tama temp stows that PGT and pre-stages his tethers on the outboard side of the right side of the mod kit. Yeah, thanks, Jimmy. With that bolt uh, driven out by Toma Pesquet, you see him getting out of the foot restraint. Uh, that will allow him to get into a position as Kimbro continues to hold the uh, Irosa Solar Ray in, in place. That front part uh, now loose and able to swing out in front, but he'll need the help of Toma Pesquet for this next set of procedures to unfold the solar array. Copy, Toma. We suggest temp stowing the PGT on the stanchion furthest from the mounting bracket. Throwing the PGT the central with us from the mounting bracket. The one at the bottom of the, the one above you. Oh, so. Stand on that handrail above you. A yeah. firm. So closer to the mounting bracket. Yep. Yeah, right there. Closer to the mounting bracket. We just suggest it's the stanchion, the wine glass stanchion, which is furthest from the mounting bracket, oh, okay. so that you don't clobber the one at the top because that'll have a adjustable equipment tether hook on it as well as the wire tie. I got you. Thanks for the clarification. No problem. All right. PGT doesn't have a rep on it, so I use uh, use a rep for my mini workstation, Jenny. Copy, Toma. You can also keep the PGT in your swing arm and lock the bayonet fitting. As long as it's yeah. in sight, then you can move your red over. Uh, move the red over while the PGT is in the bayonet fitting. As, okay. as long as it's in view and you can see that it's locked, 15 seconds to hand over. Copy. That's what you did, Shane? I had another one on there. Yeah, I did. Okay. We can just keep it in there and just hand it to him. We want to need it. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. <laughs> Another handover of video from the International Space Station. Again, we'll be having these handovers periodically. What you were seeing before we lost uh, that signal was the helmet camera view from Shane Kimbrough looking at Toma Pesquet. He's finding the right place to stow that pistol grip tool, that space drill, uh, because the next set of procedures will be together. Kimbrough and Pesquet working to unfold the IROSA. Pesquet is ready with some tethers to ready to strap his end once Kimbro unfolds it from his side. 
We're back with you after the handover. All right, Jenny, how about I, I keep my PGT and then we, I'll hand it to Shane when he needs it. Yep. Think that works? That's totally fine. We're just trying to save you a socket swap and that also does the job. Me, that's fine. Copy. Your next step to my is to translate to the right outboard side of the mod kit for Ibrosa Unfold. Right outboard of the mod kit, and I'm stable here, Tomah, and I'm leaving, so you got it. Okay. And Tomah, you'll be staging an adjustable equipment tether uh, to attach to Ibrosa once we unfold it. So I have that handrail stanchion when you need it. Okay. Please, go ahead. You'll be attaching the small, small adjustable with the hook going to the right upper strut handrail. Looks like you just put a tether down there. Make sure that it's the stanchion closest to the mounting bracket. Copy. Right upper strut. And rail extension closest to the melting bracket. Mark you on it. Good words. Okay, I have an AET stage there. Copy. I'll take a glove inspection, half check, and gauntlet check from you tomorrow. Half is dry, gloves, there's some uh, black smudge from the translation, but uh, they're in a uh, very good state. Um, what was the other one in Jenny's side? We'll be hearing HAP and glove checks throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, making sure uh, their helmet uh, absorption pad that's on the inside of their spacesuit helmet, make sure that's dry, as well as the gloves are not uh, scuffed up from some of the activities they're performing, uh, mainly with their hands. The large, small adjustable, we're attaching the large hook to the handrail with the wire tied cables on it. On the uh, lower strut, upper handrail, is that correct? Yep, that's right. The lower strut, upper handrail. And since it's a large hook, it doesn't matter which stanchion it's on. Okay, large hook of the adjustable. Part of the procedures that were added to today's spacewalk to help to uh, align the IROSA with the mounting bracket. You see it now from this great view of uh, Tomapa Skay is to use a series of tethers, the tethers being uh, wrapped around both the solar array and the mounting bracket. Fold IROSA to full extension. Warning, there's a pinch point. Keep clear of rotating IROSA. So again, Tama, that has you outboard. I do like uh, the other day tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So we need to go on local. Yep. And the solar array now beginning to unfold. You have it. Out of my hand. I have it. Looking good. Yes. So, then uh, it's uh, unfolded 175 
Just like last time, I don't have visual on the alignment guide, um, but I'm guessing we're in the same situation as last time. Expected. Okay, copy. Uh, we do have a step for you to check, but we're expecting exactly the same thing, like you said. So we can have you connect your adjustable equipment tethers to IROSA. They'll both be going to the IROSA handrail, which is directly in front of you because our plan to attach to the IROSA clevis did not work. Shane, of course, you can help Tomas stabilize IROSA if he needs it, but your next step is to install a wire tie around the center soft capture handrail with three twists. Okay, I'll get working on that. I got the large small AT on the handrail, Jenny, and I'm gonna put the small small. Copy. Now with, now with the solar array unfolded, the spacewalkers will work together to help with the alignment uh, using some adjustable tethers and wire ties. Once the solar array is aligned, the spacewalkers will grab those space drills they were using to unbolt, uh, and they'll start bolting the uh, solar array into place uh, aligned on the mounting bracket. Using the hashtag AskNASA, we got a question from on Twitter. Why is it important to count the rotations when loosening the bolts? Uh, this is to avoid any stripping. Copy, Tama, both those adjustables are on IROSA. That's correct. I, um, the next step is really us working together to um, try and reinstall IROSA um, in this new config on the mounting bracket, but um, we'll have Shane finish those actions with the wire tie on the middle soft capture feature prior to doing that. So, Tama, for now you can stand by. Yep. I'll start working on the MLI if I can. But, uh, we might touch it again, so. Yeah, we have a step, we have a step later on for the for the MLI, Toma, but um, we can talk if you want to get started early. I would like to check if, from your current vantage point, can you see all three alignment features on the outboard side of the mounting bracket? And you, uh, you were breaking up, Jenny. I didn't copy. Um, I didn't copy the last half of your message. Second half. No problem. I want to check if, from your position on the outboard side, you can see all three alignment features. Point. Can see one, two, three. Yeah, can see all three of them. Copy. That's good to know. Thanks, Thomas. Okay. Jenny, I got the wire tie on. I got the adjustable connected to it, and that goes to the lower stanchion. Right. Yep, the stanchion furthest from the mounting bracket. Exactly right. Yeah. Some work. So again, Pesquet and uh, Kimbro working together using a series of uh, st adjustable straps and wire ties to help with the alignment of the solar array onto the mounting bracket. That'll help, uh, help to align all the features to allow them to bolt and secure, fully installing the IROSA to the mounting bracket and allow for a deployment later in today's spacewalk.
And Shane, we want to tighten that adjustable up um, as much as you think is necessary so that that soft capture feature stays down and out of the way for this troubleshooting. Copy. All right, I'm going to tighten it up. Good words. Okay, and we put it all the way down and then tighten it, right? Hey, Fern, we want it all the way down, out of the way. Okay. Well, it's not quite there. It'll reach. If I can move it to the other hook tomorrow, it won't be too much slack in that one. Yeah, we have to make not the wire tight. Let's uh, go around one more time with the wire tight. I could go up and back down. No. To the other ring. No, to the other ring. Right. Yeah, that sounds good to us, Shane. Well done. Again, what's being worked on now is an addition from the previous spacewalk to help with the alignment of the IROSA onto the mounting bracket. Uh, with these straps and wire ties helping with the alignment, they'll be able to secure it using bolts to the mounting bracket. You can ingress the APFR, and then I have big picture steps for both of you. And what's your arch? It's still closed shut. Yeah. Okay, copy. Maybe I can even get you back off. No, I'd wait. On the right. Happy. Now entering into an orbital nighttime, the views outside the International Space Station getting a little darker as we uh, cross over the Terminator line into an orbital night. Uh, station 269 statute miles over the South Indian Ocean. Genuine position, I think. Okay.
So if, Shane, you're in the APFR, then I have big picture words on our next troubleshooting steps. Okay, I am in. Go ahead, Jay. Okay. So the plan here is we are going to try and keep the leftmost soft capture feature engaged and straighten out IROSA, then pivot it onto the mounting bracket when it's straightened out. Actually, hold, Shane, we'll have you power psych out your HECA quickly. We just lost your camera view. And we're looking for a check of both green lights as well, Shane. Waiting for next steps from the ground IV, the voice you're hearing in Mission Control Houston, Jenny Seide, uh, giving instructions, these all troubleshooting steps, uh, additions to help with the alignment of the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Next step is to get the IROSA into a soft dock, or soft capture, rather, position. Thanks, Shane. We're looking into it. Folks, they're checking. Okay, so again, Big picture, we're going to try and unfold and then pivot onto the mounting bracket with the pivot point being the leftmost soft capture feature. So working together, Toma, you'll be pulling IROSA outboard. Shane, you'll be pushing the right side of IROSA outboard toward Toma, but you'll also be pulling the left side of IROSA near the hinge toward you to make sure that IROSA is fully unfolded. Does that make sense? Jenny, are we... Are we sure that the light uh, detent is not engaged or is not in a way? I want to check that as we... The right... It's all the oh. way down. It's all the way down. Yeah. yeah it's From my vantage point. Good verification. Good right, morning, it's tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jenny, what can I touch here to push and pull? Maybe two. You can touch the uh, stanchions that are sticking out toward you. Those are the canister for the um, the folding and unfolding bolts, like R6. You can touch those and check in on the rest. Okay. Well, I think those will be good enough on each side. So okay. You. you can also touch anything on the root beam, if that's helpful. And we have your... Hi, Shane. I'm, uh, I'm in position if you are. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So um, I think you're going to have to pull on the, on the center part, but on the left side of Irosa, and then I'll pull on the right one, and I should fold it and bring it down. Okay, so nice and slow. I'm going to okay. coming towards me. Okay. Go for it slowly. Not going anywhere. Yeah, you know how hard it was getting it in. I think it's pretty solid. Yeah. Little pulses on it. I'm doing but nothing. Yeah, but I think I think it's good enough. Yeah, it's engaging. Great, great. It's aligned. Okay, can you push on the right side? Yep, I am. If it should down, can you control the right side for a moment? I have the right side and the left. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's going good. Let me get out of the way. A little bit out. But there we go. Yeah. Let me go back and look. Uh, not, not quite, but... If we're, we're not far. Push, push more. I have a lot of strength there. I mean, I'm just so far reached out. But uh, that's all I got out right there. Hard to see, but from this view, we have uh, Shane Kimbrough on the left, 
Thomas Pesquet on the right. He's pushing the right side of the Irosa, trying to get it into a soft capture position on the mounting bracket. Yeah, your soft capture one looks like it's still out. It may not be all the way out, but I think it's in the either you know soft dot position. Okay. Okay. Look, he came in a little better. That's just a lot of friction. It on the back? Yeah, I see it. It slides in, but it stops. Okay, so we're in the same situation we were. No, no, no. No, it's a line now. Yeah, but over here on the side, when we started, just get, had to have some more force to get it through. It's a line. That's good news. Yeah, but. We, we copy. Yeah, it's cinched down over there with the decimals. Not entirely down, but mostly down. I can't like, get a good body position here. To yeah. Short hand over. Okay. Yeah, that's Another handover period, uh, losing video from the International Space Station as the station orbits the Earth, handing over from TDRS or tracking a data relay satellite to TDRS. Uh, we'll be regaining some of that video shortly. The last view you saw was from the helmet camera of Shane Kimbrough. Uh, Kimbrough working with Pesquet, who was to his right. Kimbrough was at the very center of the IROSA. They were working to uh, soft capture the right side of the IROSA, the left side secured, uh, to the mounting bracket. Back with you after handover. It's, it's lining up, Jenny. I don't know if you see my head count, but there's still some mechanical interference. Um, okay, we copy. We don't have KU band back quite yet, so we can't see your helmet cam, but from what you're telling me, there's still some interference. You felt a lot of friction when you were um, installing it back onto the mounting bracket, but you did get the alignment guides lined up? Yeah. yeah. We did get the alignment. Okay. And that's the alignment feature just on your side, Tama, or you could see the other two as well? I can't see all three at the same time. Are you sure I'm checking them all on my side? I'm on the losing side of the other two, especially at night. Yeah. But the other two are still in. I mean, uh, Last time I saw, uh, I think they're still in. This one is nicely aligned in the middle of the of the slot, but it's still not going in. It looks like I don't know what's blocking. Um, okay, but I copy. I can't see anything because I cannot poke my head now between the arosa and the panel. There's not enough room. Yeah, I understand. But you did get all three alignment features lined up. That's at least good news. It's lined up, but uh, I'm going in. Tomorrow, can I release this right side or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm still controlling it. Yeah. Right now. Cool. Well, Mike, we might need to both of us be on this side chain and pull on it. I don't you don't see any other way. Right through there. Yeah. It's 
and out of pitch. So yeah, I got some pretty good force on it now. I moved over. Yeah? Yeah. So, can try, but. Looks like it moved there. Yeah, it yeah. definitely moved. Yeah, okay. Looks like it moved. Don't do anything. Okay. <laughs> I'm holding it. Go back. That's great to hear. So the alignment features are engaged, and you're checking the right soft capture feature now, correct, Tomas? Correct. Okay. You're in? Yeah, I think I'm in. The right uh, soft alignment feature is uh, Jerry. Copy the so right. I don't know what you did, but. Right soft capture feature is in, and the alignment is good. That sounds like you guys were able to do it. Fantastic job. And applause here in Mission Control Houston. All of the uh, mitigation tactics to align the IROSA with the mounting bracket have worked. The right side of IROSA is soft captured to the mounting bracket. Then you have eyes on all three of them, the alignment guys, and all three of them are nicely aligned all the way in, and just for sanity check. Hey, fantastic news. Thank you, Tomorrow. Gold. This is my PDT. Oh, it's you. Yeah, wish it was on me. Yeah, the left it on me. <laughs> All right, next steps are to have uh, Shane remove the wire tie from the soft capture feature that you, uh, you tied down there, and you can stow that wire tie in your trash bag, uh, pick up that adjustable equipment tether, and we'll deploy that soft capture feature as well. Okay. Good Start driving the M35 and M36 in some here with the PGT in the hand. I need if that sound like a good idea to you. Say again, Tomas. Uh, I'm right here with the PGT in hand, uh, standing by to hand it over to Shane, so there's M35 and 36 right in front of me. Checking. No rush, the initial will be ready in 30 seconds. It's, it's just in case. So you can go ahead and knock those out. Yeah. Copy. All right, I have, uh, I have next steps for you. We're kind of back on a more nominal timeline, so we're just getting reconfigured here on the ground. You guys have done a great job to get us back on track. Um, after stowing that, uh, that wire tie and adjustable chain, you'll be at the crew lock bag, and Thomas, you will be uh, driving R7 and R8, which are the hinge bolts. So for that, we are going to have you ingress the APFR in the center of uh, of IROSA. So Shane, you can... Oh, Shane, yeah, it's Shane, Shane do it right now. I mean, in the APFR. Unless there's other stuff I gotta do. That's my PG. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jenny, we don't want to jump the gun. Whatever makes sense for you guys, but... Yeah, we're just making sure. I want to be. I want to be absolutely sure before I give you guys the next step. So stand by one. So it's left it to you. It's we still left it to the bag. It's still to the bag. Oh, uh, why don't we just change that now? Yeah, great. So uh, I'll do it. I'm going to use you as a translation. Yep. 
Okay, I have an answer for you guys. Uh, Shane, you can drive the hinge bolts. So again, you'll be using Tomas PGT for that. But since you're in position, it's no problem if you do that. We'll just have Tomas move to the crew lock bag to retrieve the AMS knob, which you'll need to snug those bolts up. Okay, sounds good. And Shane? Just a minute here, we're getting reconfigured. Copy, and uh, Shane, you m we think you'll be able to reach both of the hinge bolts from the APFR, but you might not be able to reach the topmost one. Just let us know if you have any issues there. The bottom one is uh, R8, which we can start with. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I may have to roll over a little bit, but uh, I'll check it out here in a minute. Free from the bag, Shane. Okay. okay and the, the other right go back to the bag? Yes. Okay. Next time you get your PGT right uh, me. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, except I need the back now. Uh, let me uh, see our 8 channel. I think I can reach our 7. So uh, maybe they wanted you to hide them here. <laughs> um, you want to swap out? They can swap, it's okay. okay. Yeah. So, Jerry, sorry about that. I'll have the APFR. I can I get our 7 for sure. And uh, well, I'll have a better shot at it. Okay, understood. That's no problem. We'll just follow the timeline as written. And Shane, can I just confirm that that middle soft capture feature is engaged and you've uh, stowed the wire tie and the AET? Um, I'm working on the AET right now. It isn't the uh, soft capture is engaged and the wire tie is in my trash bag. Copy. Great work. Tama, you can ingress the APFR and ready your PGT. So the tethers and wire ties that were used to help to align IROSA with the mounting bracket, uh, that mitigation strategy worked. Uh, they're gathering some of that equipment and getting staged for uh, fully installing the solar array to the mounting bracket. There'll be a series of driving some bolts, so they'll each have a pistol grip tool or a space drill, uh, and they'll work to uh, engage some of those bolts on the mounting bracket. Glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check. Oh, okay. Copy. Got it. Okay, gloves look good. A small smudge on the right uh, ring finger. Um, probably just from translation, like Tomas said. And uh, dry hap and gauntlets are down. We copy. Good checks. Thanks, Shane. You can retrieve the AMS knob with a six inch wobble from the crew lock bag. I'm in the APFR. Uh, oh, yeah, I need some roll. Yeah. Copy, Tomas. We'll have you ready your, ready your PGT, and then we'll see if you can reach. Uh, on the roll pedal for me, Shane, with your foot, or is it that far? True. If it's too complicated, I'll, I'll do it. I'll pop the foot out. I guess. I go with a, do like that, <laughs> my hand just like that. Tell me when it's good. Okay, I'm going to depress the pedal. Are you okay. ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, here we go. Okay. We're going anywhere. We're moving. Uh -huh. no, I'll try to do it. I'll try to pop the food. It's fully depressed. Is it? Yeah. It's not moving. Oh, I think it's not. I think we cannot because the pitch is 90 degrees. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I think I have to. It's like this. Never mind. Sorry about that. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's try. And Jenny, I'm ready for settings if you have settings for me. Alpha 1, clockwise 2. Alpha. God, it's a small one. Alpha 1, clockwise 2. A firm. And alpha one, clockwise two. So 
you'll be driving R7 and R8, 13 turns only, 1 3. Getting my PG2 off, so. Uh, okay, Alpha 1, clockwise 2, taking once again. A firm, and we're looking for 13 turns only, 1 3. 13 turns on R7 and R8. Good read back. Shane, you can retrieve the AMS knob, and following that, we'll still have you at the crew lock bag. If you want to get ahead, your next step is to retrieve the cap keeper as well. You're seeing Thomas Pesquet using the pistol grip tool to drive some of the bolts necessary to secure the uh, solar array uh, in this configuration to the mounting bracket. Meanwhile, Kimbro is retrieving something called an AMS knob. This will be used after the pistol grip tool uh, to finger tighten or hand tighten uh, these two bolts. Then you have, uh, sorry, I gave it more turns. I gave it 17, one, seven turns because I couldn't see anything at the very end of my uh, my reach. Uh, but I gave it 17 turns. I have green light and good torque of 2.4. Copy, green light. On R7. 2.4 on the torque and 17 turns. We're just talking that turn countdown here. Don't make him do it. <laughs> Don't get the AMS knob on R7 from the APA car. Probably not. That's too high. I have to climb on the Arosa. Okay, I can use this. Both. Yeah. Yes. Both. No, I can't. Not bolted yet. Nope. One sec. Okay, anyone anyway, you're talking R7, you want all right, driven? Yep, you can start on R8, Toma. Remember, 13 turns only. Understand that the, the other bolt was a bit high. It was difficult to see. We're going to have to have you back out the other bolt, R7, two turns. Uh, even with a good torque and a good green light? Okay. Um, Again. So here's for you. I might have to, to get to R8 with the AMS tool. In any case, I have to climb on the other one, so I cannot do it from the APA car. The, the end bolts are not driven. Copy. We have some body position options that will help you reach that outside of the APFR. So I have 13 turns on R8, but no torque and no green light. Copy. That's a good config. Config? Okay. Now let me, uh, what are your settings for backing out R7, Jenny? Checking. So there are two bolts uh, to secure the hinges. Right now you're getting a helmet camera view from Thomas Pesquet's helmet camera. He's looking at the center of the IROSA, and these bolts will secure the hinges that help to unfold it. They need to be hand tightened, so they're only going to do 13 turns and then use another tool called the AMS knob to hand tighten uh, the remaining torque. Copy, two turns. <laughs> you can stir your PGT and receive the AMS knob from EV2. You're going to be torquing both of those bolts to just snug, so around two turns each. 
understand um, you might have some constraints reaching the uppermost bolt. We'll talk about that when you get there, but you can start on R8. Okay. Does it not set that tool, Jenny? To turn by hand. Yeah. Two turns, yeah. It's turned by hand. It's not a ratchet tool. Is there lead tooling on it? From this view, you see Pesquet has that uh, AMS knob. It's a hand tightening tool, just a delicate two turns to secure the hinge bolts that uh, help to unfold the IROSA. I think it needs a lot more than two turns to be snug, Jenny, so you want me to keep going with the uh, rest the AMS tool? Just until snug. Okay, it's going to take, I think, maybe five-ish turns, I think. Sorry, my seven turns from the top might not be that bad. I don't know. I'll find a reason. And Tama, um, like we said, that's too snug. We have a turn estimate of two turns, but it might take more if you're finding out. Yeah. Yeah, I've given it like five or six turns, and I still see maybe two millimeters to go. Copy. And then Yeah, I'm snorting now and tight. Copy, the bolt is snug. So done for R8. Okay, and Jenny, my question, I guess, is can I translate on the IROSA even though the end bolts are not uh, driven? To R7. Toma, you can use the root beam. Just make sure that you uh, don't touch the blankets, as always, but the root beam is fair game, even if the end bolts are not driven. Yeah. The beam is going to be good enough to get up there. Sure, I'll up to you. Intro. Yeah. Back to you. Okay, go ahead, do your PFO, and then okay. climb up. Nice. Um, nice and easy. Yeah. With the first of two hinge bolts tightened to be uh, just a little snug, Pesquet now moving into a position to allow him to reach that upper bolt and uh, do the same thing. And Shane, if you haven't done so yet, you can prep the cap keeper from the crew lock bag. We'll be transferring that to Toma and using it to remove the caps from the ends of GLs. Copy. It's uh, right there in front of them, ready to go. Back in two. Copy. Well done. Snug. Um, okay. Now what? Cap keeper. Cap keeper. It's right here tomorrow. Oh, okay. They can just leave it to the bag and, yeah. Marshall, well, this would be nice if you didn't your phone, but you got it. Right. We copy that R7 is snug, and that's right, you'll be removing the caps. You can keep the cap keepers stowed to the crew lock bag, or redded to the crew lock bag. This works tomorrow. Well. Making progress. Constant improvement matters. Okay, here's one cap.
EMS now is back in the crew like that, Jimmy. Copy, Shane. Copy. Four. Back at you, Shane. Got it. Thanks for throwing. Good job. Oh, and bolts. Copy. We're talking next steps. It's likely going to be M bolts. I'll have words for you shortly. Yep. Just put away tomorrow and I'll come here. Uh, Get on R7. Sweet. Yeah, that's fun. All right, big picture for you guys, considering the time we have left in this eclipse, it's only about two minutes. So we're going to move on to driving M bolts. It's crew preference who drives the M bolts. Again, we just have one PGT with the correct socket, which is the green PGT or Shane's PGT. We are one hour away from the next working eclipse where we will be able to do the uh, full cable config at the legacy panel. So the other crew member, whoever is not driving bolts, will head outboard and disconnect the cable harnesses from one another, that cleanup step that we did at the end of last DVA. We will not be touching the legacy panel at this time. Okay, that sounds good. Um, you want me to drive first, drive these, and you do your connectors, and yeah. then we'll swap. That very nice sense. Okay. Thanks for getting through your phone. Yeah, I think I will. Yeah. Let me take my no cool. And be out of your way. But Jenny, the plan, I don't know if you heard, is that uh, Ben will drop the bolts on each side while I'm cleaning up the connectors on my side, and then we swap rolls. That sounds great to us. And um, what, another cleanup step is also to retrieve those uh, adjustables at some point, not now, but something we can do as well. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking here. We might have you uh, take a look at cleaning up those adjustables as well, but I'll have a confirmation for you soon. Okay. Two hours into today's spacewalk, the spacewalkers have their next steps. There are four bolts that need to be driven on the right side of the solar array to secure it in place to the mounting bracket. Uh, in the meantime, the other crew member will work on routing some cables and cleaning them out, getting them ready for the connections. We're about to enter into an orbital sunrise, which means the sun will be shining on their solar arrays and the uh, arrays will be producing power. Uh, some of the next steps after bolting the solar array to the mounting bracket include connecting some of the cables. We need to be in an eclipse or in an orbital nighttime uh, in order to start that work to reduce the electrical current flowing through uh, the solar arrays. Uh, so the Astronauts will be working on the bolts during an orbital sun rise and the connecting the electrical cables during an orbital nighttime. All right, Jimmy, I get my PGT set up here in a sec. Copy, Shane. Your settings are Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Bravo 5, clockwise 2, set. And we do have a preference that you start driving bolts in the center of the mounting bracket. So we have written starting with M35, if able, but understanding you're splitting those bolts with Thomas. Is 35 the in most on the right side? Yeah. Hey, firm. Oh, you can move. Yeah, I could probably get that. Copy. 
We're looking for 11 to 13 turns. It'll be to hard stop, and the black line will be flush. Two, three, four, five, five second lead, six. <laughs> That's two more right there, Shane. Eight, nine, ten. Seven, twelve, thirteen. We have low torque. Any green light there, Jenny? Yeah, we want these driven to torque. Need some more? No, still not. Yeah, I just can't. Oh, you got it. Got it. Yeah, green light. Okay. And yeah, black um, line flush. Looks like. Yeah. All right, thanks, Tamar. Hey, boys. Do my work, Bill. Really. Connectors. All right, Bravo 5, going for Thank M34, you. Jenny. Copy, M34. All right, cable is connected on my side, Jenny. Tama and uh, go back, Shane, when able, can you report torque and turns for M35 as well? It was 13 turns and the torque was 22. 22. Copy, 22 on the torque and 13 turns. Thank you. Okay, for M34, 22 and 12.87 turns. Green light. Copy, 22 on the torque, 12.87 turns, green light, and check black line flush. Black line flush. Copy. Shane, it looks like your helmet might be touching the blankets. Just a reminder to back off. If we have trouble reaching those bolts, we can egress the APFR. Okay, on uh, M32, um, 22 on the torque, 13.47 turns green lights. 22 on the torque, 13.47 turns green lights. On M32, check black line flush. And black line is flush. Come on, is my helmet clear if I'm down here? Um, yeah. And there's that, uh, that um, RC extension that's also really cool to hit the visor. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, you see that. And uh, as long as you're clear of this and you don't go up, that'd yeah. be good. Thank you. That's uh, three, four centimeters now. You're getting a view from the helmet camera of Thomas Pesquet looking at Shane Kimbrough. He's in the suit with the white uh, stripes or the unmarked suit driving the bolts on the left side, making sure they're secure over there. 22, 12.87 turns, green light and black line flush. Copy, black line flush, green light, 12.87 turns and 22 on the torque for M33 ready for M31, and we're still showing your helmet pretty close to those blankets, so we'll have you egress the APFR for the final bolt. Yeah. Well, this way it might even be more comfortable out of the APFR. I can hold a PGT. Copy. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. 
BRT found. Yep, that's your back and Kimbrough has three of the bolts on the left side driven. He's going to get out of the foot restraint uh, to drive that fourth bolt. Copy. I'll get that together for you. I have that data for you. We're at PET of two hours and seven minutes, EV1 Medox seven hours, and we are 53 minutes until our working eclipse for cable connections. Jenny, it sounds all great. Yeah, you guys are doing fantastic. Plenty of time. Not engaging, so it's on. M31. Yep. On it nicely. Let's see if I can come from the other side. Shane, if it's difficult to engage, you can start it by hand if needed. From the helmet camera of Thomas Pesquet, just hand tightening some of the bolts while Kimbrough gets into position to drive that fourth and final bolt on the left side. They're counting down to an eclipse or an orbital nighttime where no uh, power will be drawn by the station solar arrays and they can make uh, the electrical connections necessary uh, to augment the power that uh, IROSA, the solar array they're currently working on, will be providing to the 2B power channel. Uh, that work needs to be done in an orbital nighttime. In the meantime, we're handing over some of our visual communications from the International Space Station. Uh, those video, that video coming from TDRS or tracking and data relay satellites. We're just handing over between the satellites now, should be regaining those views shortly. Copy, I just caught that. We're back with you after a handover. So that was M31, 22 on the torque, 13 and a half turns, green light, and black line flush. Uh, I'll have to stay here with you. Um, unless, they, unless you uh, swap over to a rep. Sorry, Mike. Mine reach if you just grab your cables. Okay. I'm just saying. Sure. Uh, I can swap it. All right. No, oh, it's right here. You're right. You're good. You're on your on knees, right? I'm right. Yeah. I'm ready for M36. I got uh, Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Good settings. You go for 36. Getting video back from the International Space Station, Shane Kimbrough completing his four bolts on the left side. Uh, Thomas Pesquet has one bolt driven on the right side. He hand tightened a couple of them. Now with the pistol grip tool or the space drill in hand, he'll complete the installation of the three remaining bolts on the right side of the solar array. I got uh, 13 turns. Torque of 22.0 and green light. Copy M36, torque of 22, 13 turns, green light, and check black line flush. Black line flush, working on M37. Copy M37. Journey for 82, my connectors are teammated. 
Copy, Shane. Do you want me to get the adjustables off the IRS or leave them? Just getting the final check for you, Shane. Okay. Seven turns on the uh, N37, 22.2, .2, and green light. Copy 11 turns, 22.2, .2, green light, and I'll check black line flush on M37. Black line flush, Jenny, sorry, yes. I got that. No problem, you can move on to M38, and Shane, you can clean up your adjustable tethers on the outboard side of IROSA. Okay, Mark. Nights, 22, and phone on tank phone track turns on M38, Jenny. Copy, green light, 22 on the torque, and that was 11.8 turns. Check black line flush on M38. 10.4 turns, sorry, and uh, on M38, black line is flush. Copy, 10.4 turns, and black line is flush on M38. So that's the final uh, M bolt driven. Well done, you two. You can uh, either temp stow Shane's PGT or give it back to him. Uh, Toma, you're going to be cleaning up your adjustables also on the outboard side of Irosa. Yep. And uh, let me know when you're ready for Got it. Thank you. I mean, I have two adjustables that I cleaned up. May I reverse it? Copy, Shane. Next steps for you shortly. Shane, once you've stowed your PGT, we'll have you start by connecting the NZGLs on the inboard side of IROSA, J1 through J4. With all eight bolts securing the uh, IROSA to the mounting bracket, the uh, astronauts are now uh, doing some cleanup steps using some of the adjustable tethers that were used to help with the alignment of the IROSA to the mounting bracket. They'll clean up some of those. There are a few cables that they're able to connect ahead of the eclipse or the orbital nighttime, so they'll get into those tasks, uh, get a jump start, and then once the uh, station uh, goes into an orbital nighttime and the solar arrays, the legacy solar arrays are no longer drawing power. They'll be able to make some of the electric connections that are necessary uh, during the eclipse. It has to happen during an orbital nighttime. Everything on track so far to meet that deadline, will they be able to make the, the necessary electrical connections? Okay, Jimmy, I'm ready uh, to get a P1 here. Copy. And no fog, no vent pins, good EMI band. Both sides look clear. Copy, good checks. Yeah, I've retrieved my uh, two adjustables there on my New York station. Copy, Tomas, that sounds good. Uh, if you're not conflicted with Shane, we understand the NZGL workspace is tight. You can also connect the NZGL uh, three and four, um, but it might just be a one crew member job. In that case, I'll have words on your next step soon. Hey, Jenny, uh, P1's made it to J1, and we're blocked over center. Copy, P1, J1 made it over center. Then I can do those checks in the P2 now, no five, no vent pins, good EMI band. The sides look clear. 
Good checks on P2J2 and to my copy. I'll be taking checks from you for three and four. Four, J4, compute pins, no fraud, EMI band, and BJ3, no fraud, compute pins, EMI band, those are nice and clean connections. J2 has made it, Johnny, or P2 to J2, sir. Copy, P2 to J2 made it, check lever over center, and I copy good checks on three and four. Lever over center. Are you going for it? Yeah, let me get out of your way. All right, I'm clear, Tamar. Okay, I'm moving in. And Jenny, I'm uh, ready to connect P4 to J4 if you concur. Concur. P4 is connected to J4, never over center. Copy, P4, J4 made it over center. P3 to G3, lever made it over center. Copy, P3 and J3 made it over center. All right, well done. All the NZGL connectors are mated. I have a caution for you. Avoid contact with the cables when they are attached to IROSA. You guys have gotten yourself in a great config ahead of the working eclipse, which is still 42 minutes away. So that means we are going to send you to some cleanup steps uh, until we have that working eclipse and we can move to the outboard cable connection. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. And, uh, you're ready. Toma, you can release your fair lead and relocate your APFR from the original EVA to WIF 29, which is on 4 Bravo. Uh, release my fair lead and I, let's go with the corner APFR to the other side on the four Bravo side. A firm. And Shane, similarly, you'll be relocating your APFR, which is now in WIF 38. You're moving it to four Bravo with 17, one seven. Copy, one seven. All right, APFR to Fort Bravo. A firm. Is that to tell you look all right? Just one second. Here, I'm going to get a chance. Make sure it's not behind me. This is better. 
rotate towards your left shoulder. That is behind you. We got your uh, bend your legs up, like you towards your right shoulder, and forward. So. It'll be easier if you come towards me a little bit. It's nice, you swing your legs in the direction of the AEA. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of in board. Like that one. Yeah. More. And then above. That keeps coming. Bring uh, I think it's between your legs now. You can clean it. Oh, wait. Come. Uh, look, did it come through there? It's, it's between your legs. So you have just your left leg yeah. and motion. Inboard. Inboard. Yeah. yeah. And then bring it up. Uh, bend your knee. Bend your knee. Bend your knee. And then at board. Yeah. Now it's to your left. There you go. It's right there. Thank across, you. across your body. Perfect. Thanks, bud. We bet. Hey, Tony. Okay. The PFR. Okay, I'll get this. I do as well. Happy. What? I remember. I don't like this one. All right, I got it on the RET and BRT. So we're talking how much t extra time that we have here, and we do have a get ahead. Uh, to check a couple of WIFs with these APFRs, which is on the way to where you'll be installing them for the next EVA. So I'm preparing some words for you to check an intermediate WIF prior to installing them on the 4 Bravo side, just so you guys know. Okay. Sure we got time to get ready for the connector? Yeah. <laughs> That's the main point. Yep, that's what we're talking down here. We want to give you guys plenty of time yeah. to prepare for those connectors. So I'm just telling you what the conversation is down here, and uh, we're keeping that in mind. Two, ast two astronauts doing very well on their timeline today. Uh, securing the uh, IROSA to the mounting bracket. Uh, the next steps comes uh, about 30 minutes from now. They're waiting for an orbital sunset. Hold here. Stop translating. It looks like your HECA, your helmet camera assembly, has come attached, unattached. Correction, your IRCA. Uh, yeah, I can see that, Shane. I'm holding here. Copy. We're looking at it now. Ready? 
Do you want me to go to Shane or go are we okay to be okay if I go to Shane afterwards? That's something I can fix. Checking to us. For both uh, both crew, Shane and Tama, we're going to put your APFRs in any nearby WIF. So drop off your APFRs, and we're going to work the IRCA. Okay. With this problem popping up, it's probably clear to you guys, but just so that we're on the same page, we're not going to be relocating those APFRs now. We're just going to be fixing this IRCA and then getting in position. We have. Uh, around 33 minutes until the working eclipse starts. Copy. Copy. Hey, Jenny, uh, my APFR is in with 18, black on black. The pull test. Oops. Uh, again, good pull test, good twist test, and pitch knob. Is out. Copy. Good checks. And your APFR chain is installed with 1818. So again, the IROSA is secured with all bolts to the mounting bracket. Uh, the astronauts are now buying time until an orbital nighttime where they can work on connecting the remaining electrical cables. They got a few cables connected already, some data cables that did not require an orbital nighttime in order to connect them. They're going to secure these portable foot restraints uh, for now, and Pesquet is going to go over to Shane Kimbrough and uh, address a helmet camera issue, just make sure that's secured. Uh, to his uh, suit, make sure they get good views from the helmet cameras of both astronauts because they're both going to be setting up for connecting those electrical cables come the eclipse or the orbital nighttime. Uh, so they'll just make sure everything is set before they enter into those next critical steps. We don't have specific words for you yet, Toma. Anything you can tell us about how it came unattached will be helpful. We're talking how to re-secure it down here. So I don't know how it came unattached, but it's still seen above the uh, same head. It's uh, kept in place by the connectors. Um, and I don't exactly know how to reattach it. Uh, we're talking down here. There's no way to kind of re-engage it. So it's nice to give Shane's, Shane pats on the head, but um, we don't think that'll do the trick. Um, do, you want me, do you want me to put a pedal over it? We're talking about it. Yeah. It's in place by the cables. No idea, but... So what you're looking at is the helmet uh, camera assembly with the lights that uh, are affixed to the top of Shane Kimbrough's suit. Pesquet will uh, work on a procedure to try to uh, secure that helmet assembly to the top of uh, Kimbrough's suit. Those lights will be needed uh, for some of the upcoming procedures to shine onto the cables that they'll need to connect. Uh, so the, the ground teams here in Mission Control are working on a solution uh, to 
uh, f figure a way to affix that camera assembly to Kimbro's uh, EMU or spacesuit. We're probably going to have to use a, a tether or a wire tie or something, but we're still looking for the exact words on how to get this reattached. We won't be able to just push it on, push it on because you'd have to um, basically deconflict and move two tabs out of the way to get it back on nominally. Touchdown. Well, I can have the tether going through uh, the bracket itself. <coughs> and our sleeve is going to keep it attached. And then we have a wire tie around um, that knob on the right side of the helmet. And that opens and closes the visor, but then that means you keep your visor down the rest of the time. Oh, that's alright. I'll do that. Uh, well, Surface, uh, you all screwed up. Let's see if they come up with. Yeah. You have a red from the mirror station that you could spare? Sure. Because uh, I'm. Um... Hey, Jenny. Um, hey, my suggestion here is uh, a red to the bracket from the Shane's New York station, so at least it's secure, it's not going to go anywhere. And then I wire tie um, on the. Uh... I do a good job on the on the knob that uh, lowers and raises the sun visor, uh, at least on one side, and then hopefully on the other side too. I have plenty of adjustables if those will help. We're happy with that plan, and to go back to your... just to confirm, Shane, you will not be able to actuate your visor with that wire tie in place. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, that is that is true. Okay, I think the best is not to go back to your main or station. Uh, tether coming from somewhere on the right. Right. Okay. Get the right of your T-bar, and right. then I'll put it somewhere on, the, on your helmet. Right. Yeah. yeah. This one has a pick there, no? Yep. All right. Okay, I have a right on it. It's unlocked, you lock it. Can you unlock it, Shane? Yeah. I can get in a better position for you. Let me know. No, it's, it's good for now. It's just that I don't have too much to hold on to. Hold. What, this one? This handhold here. I think like this is not too bad. Um, can, you, can you hold it with one hand? Very where? Uh, on your like uh, as best you can. There. Yeah. Okay. Try to tie it. Okay. Yeah. The wire tie, okay, I'm still holding it down. I like it slipped off there. I have to move. Instead of my local tethers too far away.
Roger's like halfway right now, so I don't know which position you're going to put it in. Time for a question, please. I don't know what that is. You want to go to, uh, you want to go to the bracket? No, I want to go towards your right side. Can I help? No, thank you. You can bring the, I'll bring the visor down. Thank you. Doesn't really catch anything, fortunately. Sleepy. A creative solution by Toma Pesquet to secure the helmet camera assembly with the lights, uh, the lights in particular needed for the uh, upcoming procedures to connect some electrical cable, cables in orbital nighttime using a wire, tire, a wire tie to temporarily secure the uh, helmet camera assembly to uh, Shane Kimbrough's suit, allowing him to see uh, the cables that he will be connecting. There are only a few cables uh, needed, and uh, these cables do need to be connected during an orbital nighttime. This is okay, you'll be able to move it. Um, oh yeah, the visor will be fine. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm not using the visor. Okay. Okay. Okay, right side is done. Thank you. Can I look right, so I need to hold it? Yeah, no, you, uh, yeah. No, you can let go, or you can take a break. Yeah. And, uh, I'll be working on that side. I'll be looking for right. To the man who is this better than before. Yeah. Is this a good position here? Yeah, it is a great position. Hey, Jenny, how much time we still have in our eclipse, in our installation? Copy, we still have 21 minutes until our working eclipse. Okay. Oh. You don't want to mind if you need it. All right, thanks for that uh, troubleshooting and tomorrow getting your buddy back in a good config. Um, while you're still with Shane, if we could get you to turn on his HECA, we'd also appreciate that because that got turned off in the process. Yeah. yeah. Stand by for a minute. Can you do another wire tie, Jenny? Oh, okay. Understood. Not done. Got it. Uh, can you come towards me a little bit uh, and bring your head uh, pitch up, boy up? Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, so again, a creative solution by Thomas Pesquet to secure the helmet camera assembly uh, to Shane Kimbrough's suit. That'll provide him nice lighting. Uh, and of course the camera views for the teams here on the ground to monitor uh, the steps that are critical to occur during an orbital night time. These are electrical cables, uh, so they need to occur during night time so the solar arrays on the 2B channel are not drawing any power. Uh, the plan now is to secure the helmet camera assembly using these wire ties, get um, uh, Shane Kimbrough in a good configuration, and then the two will make their way over to the work site, uh, get in position, and wait for sunset.
with me? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. My other hand on the screen. Go. I know it's moving a little bit. Don't let go. I'll bring it forward a little bit, she can. No, no, not the lamp. Bring the lamp back up. Pitch up the lamp. The lamp. The uh, light. The light. What am I doing with it? Pitch it up. Pitch it up. Yep. Up. Oh, yeah. I'm off. I'll have to redo everything. Yeah. Uh, I could go around. Can go around the helmet person else. You have a red on it, right? That thing to hold on to. That's what you No, there's nothing good. Nothing to attach it to. We copy, Tomas. I can attach it to the safer tower. The safer tower is probably the best option. I'm going to do that. You're saying, give it another try. Thanks, Tomas. Hold it. because I'm going to pull on it a little bit, okay? We're keeping an eye on the time and we're only going to work this for about two more minutes. And at that point, we're going to move both of you in position on Shane's side of the cables, considering this helmet issue. And then we'll talk the cable forward plan from there. I Thank you. 
I think the right side is good. I should rotate. Go, go to your right side, not your right side. Right side. Oh, your right side on the IA. To your right side. Put your right shoulder on the IA. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I copy that you guys think it's in a good config. Yeah, I think for now it's in a good config. All right. I'll have to redo the wire tie on the right, but I think for now it's not going anywhere. I want to try not to pop your head on. So I can use the visor and uh, uh, yes, you can. Uh, Danny, if I have two more minutes, I'd like to give a try to the uh, wire tie on the right side, please. Guys, we can revisit this. all my work might be undone. We can revisit this after the cables, but at this point we're going to have to get you in position both on the left side of the mounting bracket for Shane's cables. Okay, but I'm going to have to redo everything from the beginning, but okay. Good. Understood, Tomah. We're just up against that clock. It's because I need, I need both sides to hold, otherwise okay. I cannot get something stable on just one side. So, and now right now I have just one side, so it's fucking, but okay, I'll do it. Okay. How is he? Come on. Anyways, we're not far. Jenny, what do you need us? And Tomas, Tomas, to confirm, you're going to be following Shane to his work site. Make sure that he's a good in, in a good yeah, config. Okay. Yeah, make sure he's in a good config for those cables because we understand the limitations with the helmet lights. And then. Config in terms of lights. Say again. Okay, this is uh, the guy's lights on, so I think it's good for now. Okay, we're comfortable with that, Tama. You can head to your side of the cables if from where you're uh, currently at. Shane looks like he's in a good config. Yes, it does. Thanks, Tama. Well, it's, I, I need to come back and spend at least 10 more minutes. Understood, Tama. We can plan for that. Uh, we just, again, we want to make sure that we get this pinch point right. We're still Understand, 10 minutes away from our working eclipse. We just need you both in position. Okay, we're both in position. Copy. Understood. And Shane, for your awareness, we do not have your camera views, which is fine, but we will not be able to help you troubleshoot these cables if there is an issue. Copy that. That's my first one, just to start and prep it. So with a little creativity by the uh, astronauts currently outside the International Space Station, Tama Pesquet was able to assist Shane Kimbrough in temporarily securing his helmet camera assembly with the lights uh, to the top of his spacesuit. He'll need the lights to connect the cables that are in front of him. You're seeing the cables that are in front of the helmet camera view of Tama Pesquet. They are in position, ready to go. Uh, they can't start connecting the cables until they're in an orbital nighttime. Make sure no power is being being drawn from the station's solar arrays, and they'll begin the electrical connections. They're both on each respective side of the station's solar arrays. Uh, they have the uh, cables ready to go. They are in position, and they'll make the connections uh, during an orbital nighttime. Shane Kimbrough is in a good configuration with the lights uh, on and providing uh, illumination of his work site. So, uh, Pesquet made his way over to his respective work site, so they're flanking both sides of the solar array, and they'll be able to make the connections on each side. If necessary, Pesquet can go over to assist Shane Kimbrough, since he does have his uh, helmet camera assembly with the lights and, of course, the camera views that the teams that you're seeing here in Mission Control Houston can see the uh, work site and troubleshoot any uh, issues as necessary. Starting the cables at this time. But just for your awareness, uh, Shane, you will be starting with P7, and Toma, you'll be starting with P9.
to get stopped tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Not sure. Yep. Of a consumables update for both of you. Limiting consumable EV1 Medox, six hours, 30 minutes. PET, two hours and 55 minutes. And I'll take a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check from both of you. Six down. Got the good nice gloves for EV1 and the happy is dry. Top EV1. Good gloves, dry hat, and gauntlets are found for EV2. Good checks for EV2. We are five minutes out from our eclipse. I have uh, two warnings for both of you. And just to be clear, I'll be giving you the go once we are at the correct time and we have all of our safing in place. Copy. The warnings are you must not demate the stall connectors until eclipse plus two minutes and MCC go. And you must maintain a one foot keep out zone from any saw connectors which are demated starting two minutes prior to and during insulation. Danny, I don't know if we still have you, but you were uh, breaking up begin copy. Okay, I'll read your warnings again. Crew must not demate saw cables until eclipse plus two minutes and on MCC go and you must maintain a one-foot keep-out zone from any saw connectors which are demated. I don't see any demated ones here. Yes. Another handover and some of the video coming from the space station should be regaining it soon as we enter into an orbital nighttime and the two astronauts begin the procedures to connect some of the electrical cables that are necessary to perform during an orbital nighttime.
flight controller is monitoring the uh, power uh, systems on board the International Space Station, making sure that current is not flowing through uh, the uh, 2B power channel. An estimated two more minutes until the uh, astronauts are given a go to start making the electrical connections necessary uh, to complete the, uh, well, in part to complete the installation of uh, the IROSA. Over a minute until our working portion of the eclipse, and again, we'll be giving you the go when it's time. Happy Jenny, we're ready. Happy. These electrical connections should be the final steps uh, to install the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Uh, once they complete the electrical connections and flight controllers determine everything is go to proceed, the next steps will be to deploy uh, the solar array while the two astronauts are out at the worksite. There are two uh, bolts that are keeping the solar arrays uh, together. Uh, they're called launch restraint bolts and the launch restraint there are two of them uh, that are needed to be undone in order to release uh, both of the uh, solar array uh, blankets All right, we are go for connections. So to start, Toma, you will be demating P9 from the blanket box, and Shane, you will be demating P7. P7 is demated. Copy. You will be mating the right side P9 alpha to panel P9, Toma, and Shane P7 alpha to panel P7. I'll take a check for FOD pins and EMI band. Can I do the cable side before? Because that's the one I had in hand, Jenny. Hey, from Toma. Yeah, I've swapped now. I've got the panel side. Okay, never mind, Jim. Easy two, no five, no bent trends, good in my gram. Copy, good checks. Same for you, you want. Copy. Before given the go to connect the cables, the astronauts inspecting the inside of them for any foreign object debris, uh, making sure they're clean before making the connection. Copy, P7 Alpha mated to P7 for EV2. You can move on to J7 Alpha to the saw cable P7. Okay, that didn't work. And good pens. No five, good EMI band. Good check, Shane. And it's mated. Copy. J7 Alpha mated to P7. Shane will have you move on to P21. You can demate that connector from the blanket box power panel, P21. Okay, work. Okay, P9 is mated to panel. We're working on J9 Alpha. Copy P9 Alpha. P1 is disconnected. Demated. Copy P21 demated. And uh, for Toma, looking for your checks on J9 Alpha. Yeah, good check on J9 Alpha. Copy Toma. 
Shane, we're looking for checks and connections. J9 Alpha is mated. J9 Alpha mated to P9, moving on to P23 for Thomas. Shane, you'll be connecting P21 Alpha to P21. Okay, no fire, no bent pins, good EMI band, going for the connection now. Happy Shane. And good check on P23. Or to up and going for a connection. Happy Toma, those are good checks on P23 Alpha. You're mating to panel P23. Yeah, yeah. Try it on with this one. All right, P23. Uh, okay, uh, P23 on the panel is connected to uh, P23 Alpha. Copy P23 Alpha to P23. Connection P23 Alpha, and I'm on two pins. I'm looking at P23, and I'm making that connection. Copy. Good checks. And Shane. Jimmy, I'm going to move on to my last one and then come back to this one if that's all right. Copy. That sounds fine to me. Uh, Shane, you'll be mating J21 Alpha to P21. And no good pants. Copy. With, uh, no good pants. Good in my ground. Good checks. P23, connected to J23. I got all four connections made. Good checks, Jenny. Nicely done, Tama. Copy. Well done, Tama. I agree. Those are your final connectors. One more to go here. All right, Jenny. I've got one more to go. I got that last one, the fourth one. Tama, that was J21 Alpha to P21, you said? 23, 23. Okay, Jimmy, um, for EB2, um, the 221 connections are now done. Copy. Those are all of our connectors. Well done, both of you. Plenty of time left. Now I'll have you secure the strut MLI over the mod kit fasteners. You can use wire ties as needed. Uh, yeah, give it a shot here. Yeah. It's pretty good on that side, Jenny. What do you think? We're looking to map. Yeah, I think so. I'm using those kind of internal wire thingies. Yeah. That's pretty good. So. We're assessing it, you guys. Again, we can see your helmet cam, Sama, but we don't have eyes on Shane's side. He's doing great. I think the MLI is wrapped. Shane's side looks good, too. Yep. Okay. Not going to win no beauty contest, but uh, the whole metallic structure is wrapped around MLI. All right, copy. We're discussing down here.
Thomas, we're happy with your side of the MLI. Still discussing change. Question uh, going back to the cables for both Shane and Thomas. We don't want you to head back to the cable connections because we're doing some safing steps now, but since we don't know what these are like on orbit, could you report whether when you made it to the panel you felt a click, like the wing tab connector went over, uh, over a connector? Yep, yeah, absolutely. On all four of them, you feel a click. Once you get it kind of lined up, you know, it seats and then you can rotate it nicely and then you get a clear of the quick kit. Yeah. Perfect. And that was on the cable side as well. You felt that little detent click. Oh. On all four of them. Oh. Yeah. I agree. Okay. okay, great. Thank you for the confirmation. We're talking the MLI. With 20 minutes of uh, nighttime to spare, uh, the electrical cable connections are complete. Now the astronauts will continue some of their additional work, including uh, covering with uh, multi-layer insulation. Uh, they'll also perform a test uh, ahead of loosening those uh, bolts necessary to unfurl or deploy the uh, solar arrays themselves, those bolts called launch restraint bolts. There are two of them, uh, and that will be one of the next steps after all the tests to verify that the uh, IROSA is secured and ready to deploy. Not yet, Toma. I should be able to tell you shortly. I want the views from it. I know that. The long wire tire. Is that it? Yeah. It's going to be great if you bump it and it's going to bolt off. I mean, there's a lot on the cable, so it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going anywhere, yeah. This is going to make it more stable. It's actually stable in 30 minutes or so. Okay, okay. thanks for you guys. Another handover of the video communications coming from the International Space Station, handing over those satellites as the station continues to orbit the Earth. Again, the electrical connections uh, that were required to be mated during an orbital nighttime were completed with a lot of time to spare. In that orbital nighttime, they're getting some of their other tasks out of the way, including covering some of the components with multi-layer insulation. We can expect a test ahead of uh, deploying the solar arrays just to make Make sure everything is in shape uh, for those solar arrays before that is made. That we're doing down here after you guys successfully made it those cables. So Tama, you can translate to Shane and work the helmet cam issue. Okay. We're gonna go to Tama, same place. So I need access to actually. You know what? I'm gonna go down here. Uh, you can go down. Here and next to me. Before the electrical connections were made, Toma Pesquet used wire ties to temporarily secure uh, Shane Kimbrell's helmet assembly that includes the cameras and lights uh, on top of his spacesuit. Uh, that's secured with wire ties. He's going to continue to work on that helmet with some time to spare uh, before they uh, get into the steps necessary to deploy the IROSA. Face this way, okay? I hope to have on this handle. 
Yeah, this one and this one here. There you go. Uh, now bring your feet towards me. Back to right foot. Put the ball. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Up. Got something. Yeah, it's uh, your voice is contacting. You got to bring to me. Go higher. Oh. Your right side to me. Your left side side to me. Beautiful. Okay, Good. done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Thank you, sir. Good night. Get okay. out of here. I'm kind of stuck there. Yeah. Okay. That's you. The HECA is the high-definition camera assembly that is on the uh, top of Shane Kimbrough's spacesuit. The green light indicates power is flowing. Teams here in Mission Control Houston will verify the feed is coming from Shane Kimbrough's helmet camera. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you, and well done. Figure out. I mean, do we have time, Jenny? You said 30 minutes, so we have time. We're going to try to fix a little bit your this side now. Okay. A little bit more tension. Hey, Fart. And we still have 25 minutes of that wait for a checkout on our side, so lots of time. Okay. Uh, do you want us to relocate the APFR or not? In those 25 minutes. We're checking on it. In the meantime, glove inspection, hop check, and gauntlet check, please. All right, for easy one, you got very good gloves. I'll put in position and dry hand. Copy for you, one. Two good gloves, gauntlet in position and dry hand. Copy. Good checks on EV2. I'll let you know shortly about the APFRs. Takes a little bit more time. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. 
visual display. All right, you two. Um, looking at uh, the check that we need to do here on the ground, we might have that complete as early as the end of this eclipse, which is around 11 minutes away. So best case scenario, we're ready to move with our steps in 11 minutes. So we do not want to commit you to moving those APFRs. We can, help, uh, we can have you get in position for our deployment steps and hold there. Jenny, I think this is a good decision, and I will do that. Copy. That sounds good. We have two good uh, high-definition camera views from each of the astronauts. That uh, troubleshooting step on Shane Kimbrough's helmet camera worked. So we got both of those. The next steps will be to get in position uh, during this orbital nighttime for the deployment sequence. There are two bolts that are keeping the uh, IROSA solar array blankets uh, together. These two uh, launch restraint bolts will help to unfurl and deploy the uh, IROSA solar arrays, they stretch out 15 feet wide and they'll deploy uh, to 60 feet uh, once those bolts are uh, undone. The whole sequence will take about six minutes and we'll be able to see it real time uh, from the helmet cameras of each of the astronauts. Once the deployment sequence is completed, uh, they'll use uh, the pistol grip tool to secure some tensioner bolts, keep those uh, solar arrays uh, secured in the fully deployed position 60 feet out. And that will complete the deployment, the installation and deployment of the first uh, brand new IROSA solar array on the 2B channel. CR9 and R10, uh, Jenny, I'm in When you translate here, I can feel the structure move. Oh. Yeah, that's going to work. You're in position? I can't see you, actually. Um, not quite yet. Yeah, I just don't like the... All right, that's better. Yep. I'm good now.
you're getting a live look at the high definition camera view from the helmet camera of Thomas Pesquet. To wait in this position prior to us being able to do our checks. The astronauts are currently waiting for an orbital daytime before beginning a test. Make sure that the uh, IROSA is secure uh, and that all systems are go before Tomas Pesquet begins using the uh, pistol grip tool. This is the space drill. There are two bolts that are securing the blankets in a rolled up position. By undoing them, the uh, solar arrays will deploy and go out 60 feet. That uh, whole sequence will take about six minutes and then they'll use uh, the pistol grip tool once again. Pesquet will have the tool in his hand uh, to secure tensioner bolts and keep them uh, tight and in place once they're fully deployed. But again, they're just standing by in position, ready to go uh, once the uh, sun starts to rise. Can you see my uh, helmet camera views? Hey, from Shane, we can see your, your helmet cam. Okay, hopefully that looks all right. We can't give you too many words on that because, um, because of the light situation, but um, we'll be able to give you more once, once we're in insulation. For now, it looks fine. Sounds good, thank you. While the astronauts wait uh, for the next steps to perform that test before deploying the solar arrays, we'll continue to take questions using the hashtag AskNASA. This next one comes from Michael, who's asking about the procedures. Uh, what about the procedures that they follow during the spacewalk? Are they memorized, relayed vocally from Earth, displayed on the sleeve, or a heads-up display? You can sort of see it on the uh, left wrist of Thomas Pesquet from this helmet view. Uh, there are a few procedures, critical procedures, that they can flip through and read at any time. It's a little booklet uh, that contains some of the procedures. Most of the procedures, though, are studied ahead of time, so they're very familiar uh, with the procedures. Uh, in addition, there is a dedicated person here in Mission Control Houston called the Ground IV. Uh, in this case, it is Jenny Seide. She is the one that is uh, communicating from here in Mission Control Houston, uh, gathering the uh, knowledge from the EVA officers, extravehicular activity officers, and the support teams here, and relaying them to the crew. She's behind, uh, on the left of your screen there, Flight Director Ron Spencer, who's leading today's teams. In the back there, uh, Keith Johnson, the lead EVA officer, knowing the intricate procedures and working with his teams in the back room, uh, knowing the uh, procedures forwards, backwards, and of course having a few crib sheets right there in the center. Jenny Seide is the voice you're hearing from Mission Control Houston. Her job is to communicate with the two spacewalking astronauts on the outside of the International Space Station, Canadian Space Agency astronaut. Uh, to her right, our left, Drew Foistel, NASA astronaut. It's his job to communicate with the astronauts on the inside of the International Space Station. Three more minutes. Astronauts continuing to hold position until that sunrise. In the meantime, we'll continue to answer some questions. This next one comes from Raj on Twitter, who's asking, will the ROSA type of solar array be used in future spacecraft and space stations? The answer is yes. Uh, these particular solar arrays are called IROSAs, ISS Rollout Solar Arrays. Uh, they're about 15 feet wide and they were folded in half when they were delivered to the International Space Station on a SpaceX uh, Cirrus 22 Dragon. Uh, that fit very nicely in the unpressurized trunk of the Dragon. For the Gateway, they will also use ROSA technology, but it will be about twice as wide at about 32 feet. 
and that will provide about 30 kilowatts of power uh, each. There are two designated ROSA solar arrays on the uh, gateway planned for the power and propulsion element of the gateway, and they'll use those solar arrays to draw power as it uh, orbits in a near rectilinear halo orbit around the moon. These are great questions coming in using the hashtag AskNASA as we await for an orbital sunrise and the astronauts do the same. This next one uh, on Twitter uh, asks, do astronauts practice these spacewalks on Earth? Uh, the answer is yes. Part of becoming an International Space Station uh, astronaut is to get uh, basic spacewalking training uh, with the uh, amount of uh, spacewalks and maintenance uh, that's needed on board the International Space Station. What used to be dedicated spacewalks for very particular procedures is now more of a basic overview of how to perform spacewalks, how to move uh, and how to understand the procedures and understand the layout of the International Space Station. There is a large pool located just off the center here at the Johnson Space Center called the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. There are full-scale mock-ups of the modules of the International Space Station where astronauts will go in uh, and become neutrally buoyant using a series of weights and floats uh, that are dependent on each of their bodies and they'll practice the procedures and understand what it's like uh, in space. It is the best analog uh, for practicing some of the spacewalking procedures that are needed. Some of them, uh, some of the runs that are done are specific to spacewalks. In fact, there were some runs that were done specifically for practicing the, the techniques needed to install these rule-out solar arrays. Here you can see an astronaut uh, performing some uh, practice procedures, holding onto handrails and working with a crew lock bag, that's their toolbox, uh, and getting familiar with the needed procedures. Two minutes till installation. And with an orbital sunrise as the International Space Station flies over the middle of the Pacific Ocean, heading towards the western coast of the United States, the astronauts in position, ready to uh, await the next set of procedures to test uh, the IROSA, make sure it's in a good configuration before beginning the deployment sequence.
now that we're in insulation, we can better see uh, your viewpoint, Shane. And we want to get a good view of the magnets on the end of Irosa, so we're going to have you yaw to your right if you can manage that in your current body position. Okay, give me a second. I'll do that a little bit more. You can lower your sun visor, Shane, if you can. Try to grab it from the front. Spare it all, you're that far. Good. Fine. Jenny, I can barely see it. I don't know if you can see it on my camera. Yep. Not quite, just at the end of it. But we understand that you're you're kind of constrained in how far you can go. That's really good if you can manage that. And um, I'll go back to that once we get there. But oh, relax a bit for now. Understood. All right, good news, you two. We have the data that we need to go for deploy. So with Shane in position, Toma, you can ready your PGT. I have settings for you. Stand by one. Bravo seven, counter two. Stand by one, Shane. Copy. I copy Bravo 7. A firm. Counter 2. Bravo 7, counter 2. Good words. And with that, Tomah Pesquet will use this pistol grip tool to undo two launch restraint bolts. Each will deploy the IROSA. It'll take about six minutes to fully deploy 60 feet. He's driving two bolts, right? The second one. Once you release the second one, then the IROSA will deploy, right? Oh, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I'm going to R9, Jenny. Copy, starting on R9, 17 to 20 turns. A white line will appear when fully released. How many times again, Jenny, please? 17 to 21? 17 to 20. Seventeen is fully released. I see a white line. Copy. Seventeen turns, and you see a white line. R nine is fully released. We'll get Shane into position. Again, uh, yawing to his right to give us a view of the magnets, and you can start on R ten. Seventeen to twenty turns. The white line will appear when released, and then we expect deployment, which should take over six minutes. Okay, Shane, you give me a go. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Five stars. Pesquet now driving the final bolt needed to deploy the IROSA. Turns. Turns turns, but the bolt is not popped out, Jenny. I keep going. Continue. Much.
Yeah, you know, 330 turns in the vault. Not sucked out. I don't see a green light. Copy, Tuma. Can we confirm, again, white lines appear on both, and both have popped out and are away? Oh, no, 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 stand by. No, no, stand by. Both turns, no white line, both not popped out on all 10. On R7. Copy, the bolt is not popped out on R10. So there is no white line. Okay, we're going to have you continue releasing R10. Okay. Turn 5-0. Solar ray deployment has begun. Copy. Well done. That's tomorrow. From the helmet camera of Shane Kimbrough, you can start to see that solar ray unfurl. The blanket's becoming clearer as it makes its way up. The full deployment sequence takes about six minutes. Your positioning looks great. We can see a very good view of those magnets in your helmet cam. Toma, we are going to have you move to the right side of the mod kit to get in a similar position viewing our Rosa un unfurling. This will work. The first of the six planned IROSA new solar arrays to augment the power systems of the International Space Station started deploying at 10.24 a.m. Central Time. The International Space Station was 261 statute miles over the North Pacific Ocean, just west off the coast of California. See the magnets, uh, the first four and the fist is snapping together as we speak. Yeah, the five are snapped. Good magnets. Copy, we see that yeah. in your helmet view. Looks good, guys. It is beautiful. Again, the IROSA or the ISS rollout solar array is about 15 feet wide and 60 feet long. The deployment sequence takes about six minutes. It'll be some time until the solar array, uh, the solar arrays themselves, the blankets start drawing in power to confirm a good power draw. In the meantime, after the uh, deployment sequence is complete, Pesquet has uh, a final task to secure the... Looking good, you two. 30 seconds to hand over. We're going to keep you in this position. 
Enjoy your view, Johnny. Copy. About halfway done with the deployment, the solar cells will uh, draw power over time and will later be able to confirm that power is being drawn from the um, IROSA. Pesquet will hold his position uh, right uh, in front of a series of other bolts called tensioner bolts. Once the uh, IROSAs are fully deployed at 60 feet, uh, he'll use his pistol grip tool or his space drill to secure those tensioner bolts and keep the IROSA fully deployed. That will be the last of the tasks on the 2B power channel. Next will be a cleanup and moving some of their equipment over to the 4B side. Again, this is the first of six planned IROSAs that will augment the power supply of the International Space Station, continuing scientific research and uh, technology development aboard the International Space Station for years to come. The 2B power channel provides critical power to a lot of important scientific experiments downstream. The 4B channel will be next. There's a modification kit already installed on the mast canister where the uh, new IROSA, which is currently at the end of the station's robotic arm, that will be moved uh, over on a spacewalk now scheduled for next Friday the 25th. The spacewalkers' remaining tasks after securing the 2B channel will be to prepare the 4B channel and the work site necessary uh, for moving the new solar array over to that new power channel. IROSA continuing to deploy as the station flies 262 statute miles right over Portland, Oregon. We gave some off, yeah, nice snowy mountains. Videos from side to side. Not bad. Oh, we have no idea. How are you both doing in that position? I'm doing good. I think my position is uh, much more comfortable than she. Uh, so I'm hanging in there. Copy. Jenny, can you tell us which part of the world we're overflowing right now? Check in. Uh, I can uh, at least give you this, Shane. We have what we need from your view, so you can relax and get in a more comfortable position. Uh, Tomorrow will keep you in position, and I'm checking for you. Okay. Thank you. You just always know that. What do you know? It's Canada. I knew it. Thank you, Jenny. I'll bring you very fitting. Thanks for asking. Do Foistel's on console with me, as you know, as well. So, party down here. Nice. Great views of the Rocky Mountains in the background as the International Space Station flies over Canada. Jenny Seide, uh, the ground IV here in Mission Control Houston, a Canadian Space Agency astronaut working next to Drew Foistel, NASA astronaut and a dual citizenship with Canada.
All right, good news, you too. You probably can see most of what we can see. We're tracking a full and good deploy of that solar array. So well done, both of you. We are going to move on to blanket tensioning bolts. So that has Toma on the inboard side at the center of the mounting bracket. Okay, well done, Johnny, and congrats to America News, everybody who was involved in that project. You're good enough. Likewise, and I agree, that was great to see. Well done. Okay, tensioning bolts. Yeah, I could go to flight. Confirmed good deployment of the first IROSA, the new solar array that is part of a plan to augment the power systems uh, on board the International Space Station. That deployment took about 10 minutes, but we did get confirmation that the deployment uh, is is good. Tama Pesquet will finish up the job by... Um, Securing two tension bolts uh, that will secure the IROSA in its deployed position. Copy. And Toma confirmed you can start with R12. Let me know when you're ready for settings. I confirm my start with R12 and I'm grabbing my PD. Copy. I'm ready for settings then. Alpha 1, counter 2. Okay, Alpha 1. Answer two. Good words. You'll be releasing R12, five to six turns, and the bolt will spring out when fully released. R12, five to six turns, get to work. Things off by one. Okay, Alpha 1, counter 2, 5 to 6 turns. Good words. The bolt popped out. I saw a, a jolt in the, in the solar array. Nothing bad, I think, as expected. I can confirm that the release that mechanism. The tension mechanism is released on R12, which is the right solar array wing. Copy. And we agree you can move on to R11. To R11. Flight controllers confirmed that the first uh, tensioner bolts uh, looks good. Pesquet has one more to go to fully secure the deployed IROSA. First thing we're going to get when you're done with this is that oops, I might just hand you a rat. Uh, yeah, so good. For R11, you have the same setting, Alpha 1, Counter 2. Alpha 1, Counter 2, after 6 turns. Affirm. And release, stop 
about and I confirm visually and Shin McKenzie is released on the uh, R eleven. Copy. Nice. Well done. That's R eleven confirmed release. We are moving to clean up steps. Sama, you can stow your PGT. Shane, your first step is to remove the square scoop, which is on the base of the mounting bracket. I'm going to go out of your way, Shane. The fish red on there. Yep. With that, we have two good tensioning bolts that are securing the deployed IROSA on the 2B power channel. That does it for the 2B power channel. Now the two astronauts will work on cleanup steps and start on uh, some procedures to get a head start on working on the 4B channel. There's another IROSA on station now waiting to be installed on the other side of the port 6 truss. Uh, they'll start by uh, cleaning up this work site and getting prepared on the 4B side uh, and getting some steps of the next IROSA uh, that will go on the 4B channel unbolted uh, just a couple steps ahead of actually moving it over to the 4B channel on the next spacewalk, uh, now scheduled for the 25th. Copy. And Shane, when you have the... Scoops on the crew lock bag. Copy. We're going to inventory the crew lock bag. Okay. Ready? Ready. And as a reminder, Shane, if half of this uh, if half of this crew lock bag is set aside for contingency and you did not open it, we do not need to inventory that side of the crew lock bag. That's what I was wanting to be here. Thank you. All right. So I have a square scoop attached to a ret. I think it's supposed to be on an internal ret, but I used one that was on the outside, but it's in the bag. Copy. I have a long duration tie down tether with a long wire tie. I have a cat keeper with four uh, MZGL caps attached, and I have the AMS tool with a six inch wobble on the end. And that one has two rets in series. Uh, what else? What else are you looking for? On the outside, I got an adjustable. I have a large, small ret. I have another adjustable. Checking for you, Shane. All right, that is a good inventory. Thank you, Shane. You can temp stow the crew lock bag on your APFR, which you left in with 18. I'll head over there now to get the bag. Four hours into today's spacewalk, the first uh, IROSA as part of the station's augmentation plan to augment the power system currently on board the International Space Station has been complete. Again, the astronauts are just cleaning up their work site, making sure they have all the tools and foot restraints necessary before moving over to the next work site, the 4B channel. Uh, they'll be preparing that channel for the remainder of today's spacewalk as much as they can uh, until to make sure that that uh, is ready for when they go out and install the new, another uh, IROSA on the next spacewalk, now scheduled for June 25th. I have a big picture update for both of you. Our PET is four hours, limiting conceivable, EV-1 Medox, seven hours, 30 minutes. And you guys are performing your cleanup steps and APFR relocates now to the four Bravo side. Following that, we're gonna head back to the FSE and release the upper support beams as a get ahead for your next EVA.
thank you. And I think my face tether is around my back, so I'll go back a little bit inboard to clear it. Okay. See it. Second tomorrow, I'll take a look. See, it's behind my left uh, left leg. Yeah, it's right between your legs. Um, if you can bring your left leg yeah, towards okay. your head. Can you see it now? I've got my crew lock bag. So I should have been What were you saying? Uh, just a second. Let me look again. That's what I think I got it. Um, it's between your legs, and now I'll kick your right leg. To bring your right, right leg towards your head a little bit. Uh, no. Um, other way. Now it's, um, yeah, what you do with your left foot there, do it with your right. Bring it towards you, towards your, uh, yeah, like that, slowly. You're too shrunk, though. Yeah, it's just kind of clear. Now take your, there you go, like that. Now come down with your feet, both of them, towards the handrail. Yeah, it's just caught on your right knee, so yeah, it's kind of clear that right, right side. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll clear itself when I go down. Okay, definitely. Okay. Transitioning over to the full Bravo side, uh, Jenny. Stand by one, Shane. Uh, tomorrow. All right, that is tomorrow, Jenny. Uh, am I not supposed to go to the full Bravo side with my case And stand by one as well, Tomah. Um, they're still just talking about that one get ahead to check an extra pair of whiffs on the way to the relocation. I'll have words for you soon. I'm going to write your relocation on. Okay. Still behind me, Shane? Um, let me look. Uh, still That's between right. your legs. You should be coming from my, le from my left, right? So I need to cross legs above it. Yeah, um, right? It's just caught on your right leg right now. If yeah. you can, can it, it should come from my left. No? No, it's not. If you can. Just lost sight of it. But... If you can bring your right knee up, I don't know, you probably can't very much. But then, uh, oh, you almost had it there. There you go. Perfect. Keep going. But the knee's going to be between my legs, no? No, it's going to come out right in the middle. Nice in between my legs. Uh, now you're good. Oh, good. Nice. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Jenny. What's the word? Toma, you are relocating your APFR to the 4 Bravo side. As we discussed, this is the nominal get-ahead. You're going to place your APFR in with 29. Shane, we are going to go have you assess uh, one whiff along the way to your nominal um, relocation. Okay, got me. It's 29, cross. Jenny, if I'm coming right back to this spot where my ATFR is, can I just temp still my crew like that here? Instead of bundling it? Checking. Yeah, I'm not, I guess I could. You're not coming back here. Yeah, my first thought is that you're not coming back there. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, disregard my last, uh, uh, Shane. You are not coming back to the site, so you will bundle the uh, crew lock bag with the APFR, and we are not doing your get ahead with. So we are on the nominal relocation, so just the translation path that you studied, and we're relocating that APFR to the 4 Bravo side with 17. Okay, And Jenny, what's the clocking on that APFR, please? 12. From this view, you can see Kimbrough at the very top of your screen. That's the 2B power channel where they just completed the installation and deployment of the first IROSA uh, to help augment the station's uh, power supply. This is the new solar array uh, that is also part of the 2B power channel in addition to the legacy solar arrays uh, that are out on the port 6 truss. On the bottom of your screen, you see Thomas Pesquet. He's already uh, getting some of the uh, next work site, the 4B work site, uh, some of the preparations uh, ready for when the two of them go out once again uh, next Friday to install another IROSA. And that will complete the port side, uh, the port 6 segment of the International Space Station and the upgrades there. PFR in week 29 with a clocking of 12, good pull and tug test. Copy, good pull, twist test, check locking collar black on black, Tomas. Locking collar, locking collar black on black, pitch India, India, the roll is Foxtrot, and the yaw is 11. All right, those are good settings. Let's confirm that the pitch knob is popped out, and then you can translate back to the cable bag. Pitch knob is popped out, and I'll uh, go back to the cable bag. Good checks. Hey, Jenny, what's the uh, pitch for the new APFR when I get it there? Fox, Fox. Okay, it's the same. Copy. I got the APFR, BRT, I got it bundled to the crew lock bag. Translate to the 4B side. Good words, Shane. That sounds like a good config. Let me know if you need any additional words on your translation path. Yeah, I probably will. <laughs> Stand by. The translation, translation path is the uh, predetermined movement that Shane Kimberwell will make from the 2B power channel, where he currently is at the very top of your screen, in the suit uh, with the white stripes or the unmarked suit. He'll get some words from Capcom Jenny Seide, uh, who's been the voice here from Mission Control throughout the duration of today's spacewalk on the translation path or the particular uh, path needed for him to get from this worksite to the next.
Yeah, I'm, I'm back on the two Bravo side. I'm making my way through the cable bag. Copy, Tama. Sounds good. You'll be closing up that cable bag and securing the lid with the straps and then relocating to the four Bravo side. Jimmy, order am I going past this radiator then order I go? Checking. Down tomorrow. Doing good. Thanks, Shane. Being in position to work on the bag. Shane, you continue translating inboard past that radiator. Genuine in position for the bag. I'm going to close it. Copy, Tomas. Getting them at our green hook locations. Copy, Shane. We're tracking you past one A frame. You are going to be translating down the second A frame to the four Bravo side. Let me uh, take my other reel is not retracting, so let me work on that for a second. Copy. Take your time. Is this the A frame I'm going for? I just imported the green hooks. A frame, that's right, Shane. The bag is closed. I'm going to go ahead and retrieve it. Copy, Toma. Jenny, I'm on uh, handrail 5311. Is that where I start going? Yeah, it looks like I go out for from here. A firm, you head back outboard. Nothing to hold on to.
if it helps. All right, I got a wreck in the bag. Shane, you can grab onto the cams of the grapple fixture, but be mindful of the pins, obviously. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm not a way to reach that. Thanks. Again, the astronauts completed the installation and deployment of a new solar array on the 2B power channel. Now they are cleaning up that 2B work site, getting all the tools and equipment necessary that was uh, that were, were necessary for the tasks today, and they're moving it over to the 4B side. This will be the work site for the next spacewalk, tentatively uh, scheduled for uh, Friday, June 25th. You, you saw uh, Kimbro with a portable foot restraint in tow. Toma has a uh, equipment bag in tow as well. We'll be relocating that to the outboard radiator side, and I have handrails for you if you need them. I will need them, but when, I'm, uh, when I get there, Jenny, if that's okay. Of course. Again, Pesquet is in the suit with the red stripes, and uh, Kimbro, the suit with the white stripes, or the unmarked suit. Kimbro is on the 4B side, Pesquet on the 2B. Short of the west. Yeah, I'm at 5329. Okay. Hey. Copy. You're at 5329. And you said your tether is oh board. your tether is limiting you from going outboard. Right. Doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be that short. Yeah, you, we're tracking that you should be able to translate further outboard, so we think you might have a snag. Let me check. And Shane, we're going to have you. Shane, we're going to have you backtrack. Um, we think it might be a snag. Uh, if you can turn back and see anything, that would be helpful as well. I'm doing that now. Thanks. retracting and it's supposed to be. Copy. I can't see anything from here. Then you're back on the, on the full Bravo side, so uh, I see that that goes off of it, there's the APFR that I just installed, correct? Across the AA. Hey, from. Hey, Tamara, so yeah, hey, Jenny, whatever I did went back a little bit, and you're out for it again, it seems to be working. A lot of potential for snags around this area. There we go. Right. Shane, we're still talking to your tether. You're still limited from going outboard. Is that correct? No, 
almost home, good to go. I went back in a little bit and then tried it again, and it, it uh, went free. So I'm at the post 17 right now. Oh, okay, that's great news. You're looking to install that APFR and with 17, clocking of 12. Clocking 12. And with a good tether configuration, Shane Kimbrough made his way out to the 4B work site. This is essentially the opposite end of where they've been working throughout the duration of today's spacewalk. After completely installing and deploying uh, the new IROSA solar array that will be uh, augmenting the power supply on the 2B channel. They're just doing some get-ahead work uh, now. Uh, Kimbrough installing a portable foot restraint uh, into a worksite interface, uh, really just getting it prepared for when they head out again for a future spacewalk to upgrade that power channel, the 4B channel. Copy, Tomas. That's where you want me to put the bag is my question. Hey, Farm Tama, that's a good position for the bag. Just make sure that the lid faces inboard. Thanks, Jenny. Correction, the hinge faces inboard. The hinge inboard. Okay, Jenny, six o'clock, black on black, good pull test, good twist test. Pitch now is out. Copy, Shane. And to confirm, that's a clocking of 12. Uh, 12, sorry. Yep. Did I say 6? Oh, yeah. no. Yep, we're looking for a clocking of 12. That's what it is. Okay, great. So those are good checks. The remainder of your settings are Fox Fox, Fox 8. Stand by. Good words. Jenny, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot 8. Good words. I'll get the crew lock bag. Copy. You'll stow that on your BRT, and can we check pitch knob popped out on the APFR? Uh, Jenny, do you want it open or closed, that bag?
You can leave the bag closed, Thomas. Your next step are to travel, uh, translate inboard and pick up your green hook along the way. Can leave it closed, but can I leave it open too? There's not that many you know, barrels right here in the area. Well, I leave it bouncing around. We copy tomorrow. We're just checking on it. So the bag does need to stay closed for this stove. Copy closed. If it helps, you might be able to use the are you tether points on the bag? Yeah, I got the crew lock bag. My BRT, Jimmy. I'm ready to get translate back. Copy, Shane. I'll take a glove inspection, hap check, and gauntlet check from you, and then we'll have you translate back to your green hook. Well, are great. Um, dry hap and gauntlets are in place. Copy. Good checks from you, Shane. You can retrieve your green hook. Tomorrow, meet you up there. Okay. Tomorrow, we're still checking on uh, bag configuration for you. Oh, that's good. I'll, uh, I'll be done in five minutes. Okay, Jenny, you have uh, three, three teeth from the back down. It's floating a little bit, but it's general orientation that you want it. I think it's good enough. What do you think? Copy, and we agree that looks uh, looks good to us. It really is your best effort, and as long as you're happy, Tama. So with that, you can translate to retrieve your green hook. Shane is going to be translating there as well. He's on his way. Fix my tether again, it's not retracting. Copy, Shane. As we enter into an orbital nighttime, the two astronauts out of the P-6 Trust, that's uh, Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency and Shane Kimbrough of NASA completing their work preparing the 4B worksite. So they move some of their equipment, uh, including portable foot restraints, uh, some tethers, some cables, uh, all over to the 4B worksite. And uh, 
they are done with those procedures, the 4B worksite ready uh, for the next spacewalk. Uh, the next uh, set of procedures we are waiting for from the ground here in Mission Control Houston uh, will be the set of procedures uh, to head over to the flight support equipment, which is on the end of the station's robotic arm. There uh, is the other IROSA, the other solar array that will be used to upgrade the 4B power channel, the worksite that they've been preparing uh, for that next set of upgrades. Their task for the remainder of today's spacewalk is to go over to that worksite and unbolt uh, a few things, uh, essentially preparing that IROSA to be removed from the flight support equipment and brought over to its new home on the 4B worksite. Again, I'm at my green hood tomorrow, but my other one's pretty messed up, so I'm there working on it. And we're back with you after the handover. We copy about your, your tether. Is that the retraction issue, Shane? Yeah, tomorrow, too, I think. Yeah, in my clear dog. I'm, I'm good. I'm on my way. Uh, I got my green hook on my red reel. Um, do you want Tamar to lead or me to lead going back? Checking. Right now, see you tomorrow. It's easier if you go. I'm right behind you. Yeah, I'm going to go. We'll have Tamar lead to the FSC. It's not convenient here. Uh, can you get over me here? No, no, no. There's no good handrail, so we'll go like this and we'll be consistent at the FSC. No problem, guys. If it's easier for Shane to lead back, that's fine with us. Shane can lead to the FSC. Uh, it's, there's no good handrail here for me to uh, jump over Shane. Great. No problem. I understand. Just make sure. I, I copy that um, Shane has retrieved his green hook. So, Ma, I need words on you picking up yours and a glove inspection half check, gauntlet check when you get the chance. I'm not at fast 309 just yet, but I'm getting there, Jenny. Copy, Tama. Okay, if I feel nice, we got the devil. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Copy. I've, uh, I'll pick up my green hook, Jenny, and put it on my red reel. Is that, uh, is that okay? Hey, friend. That green hook is on my red reel, and it stays unlocked. All three of us are unlocked, and my yellow hook is locked on my green wheel. Copy. That's a good config, Toma. I'll take a glove inspection, half check, and gauntlet check as well. Gauntlets are down. Gloves are good. Some flex modules from translating around. Um, and the hook is dry. Okay, copy. That's a good check. I have a big picture update for both of you. Our PET is 4 hours 35 minutes. EV1 Medox, 7 hour 20 minutes. As mentioned previously, we are headed to the FSE to release the IROSA upper support beams. That should take us about one hour, and then we will reassess where we are. Jenny, that sounds good. Okay. And you guys are doing great.
So confirmed from the flight control teams here in Mission Control Houston, everything looking good for the two spacewalking astronauts to proceed to that flight support equipment. Correction, it's not at the end of the station's robotic arm. It's on a portion of the station's truss called the CETA cart. There it houses the flight support equipment that is holding the uh, final IROSA that was delivered on SpaceX Cirrus 22. These IROSAs contracted to be built by Boeing and subcontracted by Redwire are going to provide augmented power supplies to the entire space station, the first two being delivered uh, this year on CRS-22. Again, they finished the preparations needed for the next work site, the 4B channel. They won't be going back to the 4B channel today to install that IROSA. Instead, they'll use the remainder of their time, as noted by the flight controllers here, one hour, to loosen up some bolts on a beam that's keeping the uh, IROSA in place. That will eliminate about an hour of time from the next spacewalk when they'll go out and be able to remove that IROSA pretty quickly, move it over to the mounting bracket uh, on the 4B channel, and install it uh, to complete the 4B channel's augmented power supply. See where I'm going first. So as written, I do have you climbing onto the FSE from the Zenith okay, Square of the port seat cart. Shane. And I do have some reminder cautions I need to read you when you're ready. Yeah, all ready. No sudden movements, stops, or quick grabs on the FSE. Translate slowly. Wait until FSE motion dampens out before imparting any loads. While working on the FSE, you must not simultaneously impart loads into the FSE. Driving and releasing bolts at the same time is acceptable. And do not contact the IROSA blankets because the solar cells are fragile. Up y'all. Up y'all. We'll be real uh, tomorrow. We'll just talk about it every time we're going to move. One at a time. Yep. One at a time. We just got your helmet cams back. I can see, Soma, you're retrieving your crew lock bag from the port seat of cart. Is that correct? Getting some good views from the helmet camera of Shane Kimbrell looking at Thomas Pesquet, European Space Agency astronaut. They've both arrived at the work site. The flight support equipment, there's an IROSA, another solar array. On the flight support equipment, he's working with a crew lock bag to get some tools needed for loosening the bolts uh, that will help with some of the get-ahead tasks to prepare for removing the IROSA from the flight support equipment and moving it over to the other power channel on the Port 6 Trust, the 4B channel. On a future spacewalk. Now entering into another short handover period, already gaining, regaining some of the audio from space. Again, the flight control teams here in Michigan.
Mission Control Houston being led by uh, Flight Director Ron Spencer. You see on the right of your screen the voice you're hearing from here in Mission Control, Jenny Seide, uh, there in the middle of the console. You are stowing your crew lock bag on the tower handrail if that's not done already. You'll also be performing a socket swap. You'll also need to perform on Copy. So then you will be, that's correct, translating Nader outboard to get to the tower handrail. Copy Nader and Shane's going to say Zenith. We'll try. Affirm. Conflict. Shane's going to translate Zenith outboard to extension Charlie. A good view being provided from the truss segment of the International Space Station. You can see the other solar array in the center of your screen. It is folded in half, just like the other array was at the beginning of today's spacewalk. You can also see the station's robotic arm off to the left. It is stretched out uh, as earlier in today's spacewalk. The other end of the station's robotic arm was providing some camera views of the deployment of the solar array on the 2B side. Hey, firm Shane, you're headed Zenith outboard, extension Charlie. You'll both be on the outboard side, correct? Let's go. WFSC moving. And I'm stopping. Inside of the gym, too, from here. Okay, I'm going to start moving again. Yep. I'm not doing anything. I'm waiting on you. Okay. All right, I'm at seven. This is where I'm putting my crew lock bag. A firm, you'll be leaving your crew lock bag there, Shane. And Tama, you are stowing your crew lock bag on the tower handrail. Good coordination, you two. Shane, let me know if you need a handrail number. Um, I got sevens where I'm putting it, right? That's right. My crew lock bag is on seven. Let me get my PRT off. And Shane, you'll actually be translating to Stanchion Alpha before using your PGT. Yeah. Crew lock bag is on the tower handrail. I'm at Stanchion Alpha. Come on, next step for you, I have doing a socket swap to the 5 inch 2 inch socket.
Okay, Jimmy, I'm going to head over to Stanson Alpha if you're good with that. Yep, I am. Toma is not translating, so you can translate to Stanchion Alpha. It is Nader inboard. Okay. Toma, I'm going to move. Still attached to the bag, probably. Well, Jenny, since uh, all the socket attachment points are taken, one socket is going to stay on the red, right? What I swap. Oh, stay on the pit pin, sorry. Not sure I understood, Toma. You're socket swapping to the 582 inch and then stowing the 716th 6 inch back on the socket right. caddy. So, yeah. so, right, so she can stow the. Just checking with you that all the socket attachment points are taken. So uh, after you move the socket from socket caddy, leave it on the pick pin, and remove the socket from the LP, put it on the socket caddy. So one socket is going to stay on the pick pin. Just checking that with you. That's not the most comfortable position. That makes sense. Checking. Now I'm moving to my yeah. on the picking temporary region, right? I don't know if I'm making myself. Where are, so is the issue that you don't have a pit pen available, Tama? We're just trying to pinpoint what the issue is. <laughs> There's no issue. I'm just so I, I, I have to take the socket off the socket caddy. I cannot put it anywhere until I take the socket from my and put it on the socket caddy. So I'm just saying you can, socket, it's, it's not a big deal. One socket is going to stay on the pit pin. Yeah, so you can just leave it on the pit pin, okay. Tama. That's totally legal. That's fine. How's the, how's the translation? All right, I'm uh, just coming up to Anton Alpha now. I see you're sleeping each other here. Happy. Okay, I'm the twins on the pit bin. Copy, Tomas. Shane, you'll be staging a mini workstation ret on the closest beam handrail for temp stow. Make sure that you loop the ret cord over the beam structure to make sure it doesn't contact the blanket. Okay. If I have a ret to get it. Coming up on five hours into today's spacewalk, the two astronauts, uh, Thomas Pesquet on the right and Shane Kimbrough on the left, are working uh, to release some support beams that are keeping the final solar array that was delivered on SpaceX CRS-22 uh, from some flight support equipment. Uh, this will help uh, to uh, reduce the time to remove the IROSA from this flight support equipment when it is brought over to be installed on the 4B channel on a future spacewalk. The 76 on the socket caddy. Copy, Tama. This is the second IROSA delivered uh, to the International Space Station and to be installed. There are planned six uh, as part of a power augmentation plan to augment the station's power supply. The solar arrays were contracted to be built by Boeing and subcontracted by Redwire.
And Shane, just for clarification, that mini workstation rat should be entirely on the handrail, so one hook on each wine glass stanchion with the rat cord looped over the beam structure. Got it. I'll just untangle on the rat to make that happen. Thanks. Any other two inch on my BGT is a good pull test. Go ahead and close that by. Copy. Sounds good. Uh, Jenny, I'm going to get ready to uh, FC9. So, next step. Do the ultimate area. Yep, so my. You're going to pre stage a ret on the lower stanchion of the grapple tower handrail, and that's going to go to the beam. Extension of the grapple tower and okay. yep. I'll stretch it out to the beam. A firm. Uh, okay, so right, right from my mini workstation. Yep, from your mini workstation, and this is just to temp stow this beam because we cannot install it yet with the other beam in place. Jenny and uh, ready for tomorrow when he gets there. I'll uh, bring my red all the way to the beam handrail. A firm, you're going to attach it to the closest beam handrail stanchion. And I copy the red config from Shane. That sounds good. You can get in position with your PGT. And keep in mind this is a Bravo 7 setting for both of you to release these beam bolts. So high torque. I'm going to get a VRT on um, for C7 and C8 when you tell me. Copy. You can get that in place. Uh, Toma just needs to attach this RET, and then he'll be doing the same. You're right there, Shane. Yeah, no worries. The red goes from the lower and soon as the tower handrail from the crew that I used uh, to the sorry, to the beam uh, handrail closest to me. Copy. That looks good. So that will be the first ret for the temp stow. Toma, you can also get in a position for a PGT setting of Bravo 7. You're going to be working with C10 and C9 bolts. It keeps getting caught, going around the corner. Okay, that should be fine. There's Bravo 7. I don't have a free good BRT handrail in the area. Okay. No one on the stance in there? No, but it's low. Yeah, I, well, yeah, this might. I could do it with this angle, I guess, but you have a different one. Yeah, I'm not going to view. Yep. It's on the wrong side, but I'll try. I think that's your only option. Yeah, I agree. I'll have the same problem on the next one. We agree. The options are sparse for a BRT hold there. Hopefully you can use the stanchion, the stanchion handrail to help brace yourself as well. I got Bravo 7, and is it counter 2? Bravo 7, counter 2. It'll be the same setting for all bolts. Copy that set for EV2. And I copy Bravo 7, counter 2. EV1, Nick Cal. 
Counter two for me, Jenny. A firm, Bravo seven, counter two. Yes, I'm ready with Bravo seven, counter. Okay, again, you can release bolts simultaneously. Toma, you'll be releasing both bolts, C9 and C10. Shane, you will only be releasing C7 until Toma is ready to take control of the beam. Eight to 11 turns each, the bolts will spring out when released. I'm going out of uh, nine turns. Nine turns for C7. Copy nine turns on C7 and ten turns C10. Well, I'm starting C10 now, so that was C9. Copy C9. C9 about 10 turns. Copy now 10 turns on C10. Toma, you can stow your PGT. I'm stowing the PGT. I'll be in a position to receive the beginning. Affirm. Kimbrough and Pesque working on support beams that are keeping the IROSA in place on that flight support equipment. There are four bolts that they're driving for the support beam on the Nader side. Let me take my local feather from the right standby. Yeah, no, we're just going to be crowded with the cool oh. bag and the beam. I want to make it as clear as possible before I bring the beam. Sounds good. There are two bolts on each side of the uh, upper Nader, upper IROSA support beam for each of the spacewalking astronauts, so they have four each. Okay, nine turns. Copy, nine turns on Charlie eight. You can stow the PGT, Shane. Yeah, I'm going to have to help you. Yeah. Got it. Uh, one hand. Got it. Okay, now I go. Yeah, I go. Well done. You can attach the staged ret from Shane to the upper handrail stanchion on the tower uh, tower handrail, Toma. Shane, you will be translating to stanchion Bravo, which is Zenith and inboard. Copy heading the Bravo. Okay, I have two reds. On that beam, uh, Copy. That's a good temp stow, Toma. You can translate to Stanchion Charlie, which is the other side of the tower handrail, or the grapple tower. Copy. I'll send that until Shane is done with his Let me move here tomorrow. I'll be there shortly. Good to you.
Dolphin, just a second to clear your safety tether from me. Okay. Now moving, moving again. Under the toa. Working together, Pesquet and Kimbro have released the first beam. Uh, this support beam on the nadir side, or the side that faces toward the Earth. They've removed it and put it in a temporary stowed position, now moving over to a different part of the flight support equipment where there is another beam on the zenith side of the space-facing side, and they'll do the same thing. Charlie there? Oh, there you are. Yep. Oh, you're good, Jerky. You um, yeah, I'm stopped. I'm done translating. Okay, Joe. Shane, now that you're in position, you can attach a ret to the closest beam handrail stanchion. The other end of that ret will stay on your mini workstation. I think I'm on a ret, but I'll do an adjustable. The line's on my circuit uh, thing. Yeah, the ret was picked in. Okay, we copy. I'll just use the large small adjustable if that's the right channel. That sounds good, Shane. You can do that. Okay. Yeah, my trolley. Copy. Tama, you're at Charlie. You can get ready to use your PGT. Again, Bravo 7 setting. Again, Pesquet and uh, Kimbro have removed one of the support beams that is keeping uh, the IROSA secured to the flight support equipment. They'll remove another beam, and this will be a nice get-ahead uh, to limit the number of steps needed to uh, physically remove the IROSA from the uh, flight support equipment and take it over to the 4B channel on another spacewalk. Again, they've done one uh, beam, removed it, and put it in a temporary stowed position. Now they're working on the next. Okay. Bravo 7. Bravo. The clockwise 2. A firm. Bravo 7, counter 2. Shane, you'll be releasing Charlie 5 and Charlie 6. Tamai, you can release Charlie 4 and then hold until Shane's ready to take control of the beam. We're expecting 8 to 11 turns. The bolts will pop out when released. Ten turns for Charlie 5. Ten turns, Charlie 5. Ten turns for Charlie 4. Ten turns, Charlie 4. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to drive Charlie 6, and you're going to hold off for it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to wait. Yes, Toma is going to pause before releasing the final bolt. Shane, you can release Charlie 6. The crew continuing to work on the remaining support beam. 
one of two that they uh, will be removing as part of these procedures to um, get a couple steps ahead of removing the IROSA from the flight support equipment. They won't physically remove it uh, for this spacewalk. They'll save it for another one. We are getting some sunlight on the outside of the International Space Station as the station itself flies 260 statute miles over the middle of the Pacific Ocean. You will be the one maintaining control of the beam as Tomar releases the final bolt this time. A reminder for both of you, we're not temp stowing this beam. We're just putting it in its final config. So that means, Shane, you're maintaining control of it. Toma will release the final bolt. And then, Shane, you will swing the beam around so it's uh, parallel with the IROSA blankets, handles facing the POA. Yeah, thanks, Toma. I'm ready. Okay. And what's our PC, Denny? Please, real quick, before we stop this. The settings, Bravo 7, counter 2, and you're releasing at 8 to 11, 11 turns. So both of them now in position with uh, pistol grip tools in hand or uh, the space drills, power drills needed to unbolt uh, the support beams. Again, each of them have four bolts, so they've already completed two. These will be the remaining two, and that will be the final support beam. So I copy Charlie 3 released. Do you have a turn count to mark? 11. Copy, 11 turns. You're stowing your PGT so you can help uh, Shane release the beam. And again, Shane, you'll be swinging it so it's parallel with the uh, Rosa blankets. Yeah, I'm going to wait till you get over there just so I don't hit the high rosa. So you don't want me to stop it from here? I don't know. Get in position next to me on my right, and then I'll pick it up and kind of swing it that way so we don't touch the high rosa. Okay. Right? Yeah? Because it actually helped me when you initiated the motion, and then I just had to grab it, but I could watch you. Let me go. So I'm moving. Okay, ground copies. That's fine with us. Toma, as a reminder, you're translating to Stanchion Alpha, which is the other side of the POA from Shane, inboard Nader. What's our PET? Five hours, 11 minutes. Great views as the International Space Station and uh, the crew outside. On the left, Thomas Pesquet. On the right, Shane Kimbrough cross over the Terminator line over the Earth. They're in the middle of the Pacific Ocean at this time, 260 statute miles.
That looked great, you too. The keep in mind that the beam won't reach the ends of the stanchion on each side, and you can hand start Charlie three for Thomas and Charlie five for Shane. Two to three turns each. One at a time, Shane. I think it's a big deal. I'm sorry, here. Yeah, I need to get in. Okay. Support beam on the uh, zenith side of the side facing towards space. A little bit clearer now that we're in an orbital daytime. That support beam has been removed. Uh, the duo will now work together to hand tighten the beam in a secure position. Uh, after hand tightening, they'll both use the pistol grip tool to secure it in that position, then move over and do the same thing with the nader beam, uh, which is in a temporary stowed position at this time. I'm not done, sir. We're still in place? Yeah, it's still in. Sorry about that. Okay, no worries. I don't feel like you're engaging. Go to hold it down. So swing it a little bit to see where the hull yeah, is. Up to see my body position. Okay. Grab control. Grab control. Okay. So we made it. Lined up. You move around and shoot up enough fire to move it. You know, I don't think it's engaging. We copy, Toma. Um, I got it. Nice. 
Well done. It's engaged, Charlie 3. You can get out your PTTs. Let me know when you're ready for settings. I'm ready for settings. Alpha 4, clockwise 2. Alpha 4, clockwise 2. Set. Good words. And Shane, you'll be driving Charlie 5, 25 to 27 turns to torque. Alpha four clockwise two twenty five or so turns, right? Same setting for me, Jenny. Hey, firm. Same settings. Alpha four clockwise two. Alpha four clockwise two. All right, I can go ahead and drive, Jenny. Hey, firm, Shane. Kimbro and Pesquet have removed the Zenith support beam, the one that's facing towards space, and put it in its stowed position. They gave it, uh, the bolts on each side, one each, one on uh, Kimbro's side and the other on Pesquet's side, gave it a few turns with their hands. Now they're using the pistol grip tool uh, to secure it in place. 4.97 turns. In light. Copy, Shane. Did you say that was 4.9 or 24.9 turns? 4.9. With good torque and green light. Copy. Correct. I go to grab Jenny. We're just talking that turn counts pretty far off of what we were expecting. Um, let me check if we want to go ahead and drive your bolt, Tomas. Stand by one. You know, I can tell how many I did finger starting, but, you know, four or five is probably the most. Yeah, we copy. Thanks, Shane. And can you see in my helmet camera the bolt sticking up, sir? Yeah, we can see it in your helmet cam. Thanks, Shane. I think our first steps here, we're going to try a different body position. So is there any adjustment that you can make that makes you think you'd be able to drive that bolt at a better angle? Uh, no, I'm on the only handrail around here. So I think that's it. All right, copy. We understand. Okay, Shane, I have some additional steps for you. Let's drive the bolt out one turn at nominal torque. The setting is alpha four counter two. Alpha four counter two, one turn. A firm. Okay, that's complete. Reattempt to install. Alpha four, clockwise two. Okay, alpha four, clockwise two is set. Turn, look up, green light. 
How many turns did you get, Shane? I just got one more turn there. So I took one out and I put one in. Copy. Shane, we're going to have you increase the torque to Bravo 7 and stay at clockwise 2. We're going to attempt 23 turns only. Happy Bravo 7. A firm. Set, and how many turns? 23 turns only. Correction, Shane, that's a total of 23 turns. Shane, the updated turn count is 15 turns, 1, 5, and 30 seconds to hand over. Okay, I just did uh, 17 turns there before you called that. Copy, you got 17 turns on the bolt, Shane, short hand over. So as we come up on a uh, short handover, we might be le losing the views from station soon. There we go. Um, the crew was working on stowing a support beam, which was actually across the IROSA, uh, keeping it in place on the flight support equipment. There were two beams. They removed one and put it in a temporary stow position. The one they were just working on was the second one that they removed. They're putting it in a more permanent position, bolting it down out of the way, uh, just getting some steps ahead of uh, essentially getting ready for the next spacewalk, uh, now tentatively scheduled for June 25th. Uh, that's when they will actually remove the solar array and move it to the 4B channel. Uh, but they were just working on troubleshooting, bolting it down in place now that it was off from the blanket itself. Seems like that worked. We'll get confirmation from the ground teams. 17 turns at Bravo 7, Shane. We're going to set the PGT back to Alpha 4 and see if we can get any more turns on it. Alpha 4, localized 2. Good settings. Oh, torque's out right away. Copy, torqued out. Well, definitely looks like it's in now. All right, we're satisfied that that bolt is where we want it to be. Now, Tama, we're going to try your bolt. Let's try the original settings of Alpha 4 Clockwise 2 and see how we get on. Am I doing another bolt here? Is that it? Nope. You are only driving Charlie 5. You can stow your PGT and release your rep. Alpha 4 Clockwise 2, Jenny, for Charlie 3. A firm, expect 25 to 27 turns to torque. So again, a re-attempt of uh, driving that bolt to secure the support beam out of the way uh, and allow the uh, astronauts to go back out and grab the IROSA on a future spacewalk. That f bolt on Shane's side seemed to do the trick. Now we'll go back over to uh, Tomah Pesquet's side and drive that bolt. They only need to drive one bolt each to secure it in place. We have uh, nine turns and it talks out with a green light. Nine turns, it looks like a comparison to Shane's fault is halfway through. 
copy, nine turns torqued out green light and you think it's driven halfway. Correct. Shane, you can retrieve the pit pin from the stowage location and push the C2 bolt into the can, stowing it with the pit pin. Again, so it's been, I got the pit pin, but what am I doing? You're stowing the Charlie 2 bolt. This guy? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Push it inside of the can and then install the pit pin straight down into the can. Okay, Jenny. Applying for Charlie 3. We're checking on settings for you. Come on. You can set Bravo 7 on your PGT, Toma. We're talking the number of turns to expect. Bravo 7. Send install, Jenny. Copy, Shane. So Bravo 7, clockwise to Toma, expect 7 turns on Charlie 3. Bravo 7, clockwise to 7 turns. Correction. Which? 7 turns only, so stop at 7 turns. Stop at 7 turns. Stop saying. Good? I'm good. You? Hanging out? Below. Shane, while Tomah is driving that bolt, you can translate to stanchion Charlie, Zenith outboard. Pescade. Copy seven turns. Uh, it's not all the way. The bolt is not all the way in. Uh, for sure, it's a little bit more than the bolt. Copy, Tomas. Let's change to Alpha four, clockwise two, and try and torque out the bolt. Alpha four, clockwise two. I'm moving tomorrow. Right away. I'm moving tomorrow. Okay. Uh, then he talks out right away. Pesque uh, continuing to work on that last bolt. Kimbro completed the bolt on his side to secure that beam to the flight support equipment. Copy. Under one turn and a green light, it torques out right away. Pesquet working on uh, getting this final bolt secured. In the meantime, Kimbro moving over to the other beam, now in a temporary stowed position. He'll uh, begin the process of uh, moving the beam over to uh, a very similar configuration to bolt it in place on the side of the flight support equipment. Tomas, we're going to have you change your PGT back to Bravo 7 and torque out the bolt. Bravo 7, clockwise 2, torquing out the bolt. Good words. Green light, back turns, 75.4. 5.4 turns, green light, and torqued out.
copy to MOS, you can stow your PGT, and then you'll be retrieving the PIP pin to stow the C1 bolt. Shane, I don't have next steps for you yet. You're just going to be uh, standing by at that stanchion for Toma to pass you uh, the first beam that you removed, and then you guys will do the temp stow on the outboard side. Set. Just pull it. Yeah. Okay, let's come in. Tomai, if that was a question about actuating the pit pin, you can push or pull on the top of the pit pin to uh, get the ball to detent. The pit pin is in place, Jenny. Add it to head back to the other side. Copy, Tuma. You'll be trans. Yep, you'll be translating to stanchion Delta Nader outboard. Pit Nader outboard to stanchion Delta. Shane, I'm translating. Or I'm still. Copy. Big picture for both of you, we're at a PET of 5 hours and 30 minutes, EV1 Medox, 7 hours, 30 minutes. Happy. Happy. Attention. Uh, Copy, Tama. You can retrieve the beam from the grapple tower handrail. You'll start by retrieving the ret hook from the tower lower handrail stanchion and attaching it to your mini workstation. Copy. Okay, so retrieve the hook from the lower handrail, putting it on my mini workstation. The lower stanchion, sorry, of the handrail. Good words. Pesque completing uh, bolting down the beam on the other side of the flight support equipment. He now joins Shane Kimbrough. 
uh, they'll be working on doing the same thing with the support beam on the other side, securing it down uh, with a series of bolts, one on each side. On your mini workstation, you'll stow the ret hook from the upper handrail stanchion and leave it attached to the beam handrail. You'll be sending that back to Shane when you pass him that end of the beam. Retrieve the hook from the upper stanchion and stow it back to the handrail on the, on the beam. Copy. Yep, that's right. So that'll be completely on the beam, and Shane can retrieve it once you pass him that end. Copy. Now you can pass that end of the beam to Shane. You'll be installing this beam in the stowage location, handlebars facing the grapple tower. Shane, if you're ready, I'm going to go behind the grapple tower here. Okay. And pass you. I'll bring it down. Thank you. There you go. Okay, I have it. Got it? Yep. yep. How about should I go and move a little bit? Okay, I have control. Okay, you have control. Good. Have a red on it? Have a red on it. Okay, good. 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 You can hand start uh, your respective bolts. Oh, it's just like the other one. to put it in position, Shane, because it's not aligned. It's, yeah, it's not. I was waiting for you to get set. But. Okay, I have a line on it. Yeah. I'm trying to maintain it stable so you can put it in position. Okay, great. Uh, it's kind of on the platform there now. Much towards you, I think, no? And now hold it right there if you don't mind. Uh, okay, I'm holding it. Try. Okay, I got mine started. Nice. Uh, do you have control? Um, I don't know. Sure. I have control. Okay. I'm sorry, get mine started. Yep. I got mine started with uh, three, four turns. Only nine. I get my red off of here. And wait till we're done. Jenny, we're ready for PGT. Hey guys, you got Drew for a few minutes. Uh, Jenny's stepping off. Uh, PGT is going to start with the nominal settings alpha four uh, for both clockwise two. Alpha four, clockwise two. Thanks. Go ahead, Jenny. So same deal as the other side, the uh, support beam that was running across the uh, IROSA, now uh, off to the side on the flight support equipment. Uh, they got a hand start with the bolts on each side of that beam, one on Kimbrough's side, the other on Pesquet's. They're now using pistol grip tools to secure it in place. Clockwise two. We're still looking for 25 to 27 turns to torque, but you guys will have to let us know how it goes at the setting. You go ahead, Shane. Uh, Driving. Six and a half turns, Drew, torqued out. Green light. Copy, six and a half, green light, stand by. We'll go straight to Bravo 7, Shane, for you, and uh, turn to I 
Bravo 7, Ted, how many turns? Bravo 7, go to torque uh, for C7, chain. Yep. 14.84 turns, green light, 25 on the torque. Copy torque and turns on uh, Charlie 7. Green light. Copy the green. Okay. Run through. We do all see at Alpha 4 or Bravo 7, I guess Alpha 4. We'll start with Alpha 4, let us know how it goes, and then uh, likely we'll follow the same sequence as Shane. Okay, that was good. Alpha 4, and clockwise 2, driving volume 9. From the helmet camera view of Shane Kimbrough, you see he secured his end of the uh, beam that was going across the IROSA. Now Pesquet doing the same thing on his side. Okay. And I'm talking now about uh, 11, 10, 78 exactly turns at Alpha 4, 10.78 turns. Copy, Toma. We'll have you move to Bravo 7 on the torque. Bravo 7 in work. We'll have you drive to torque, drive to torque A firm. And Shane, I'll take a glove inspection and a hop check, please. Okay, gloves are great. Try hop. Copy, good checks. Good torque, green light, 9.83, 9.83, torque. Copy, 9.83 turns, torqued out with a green light. Tama, you can stow your PGT and I'll take a glove inspection hop check. So good gloves and a dry hop, Jenny. Copy, Tamai. You can retrieve your ret, and then I'll have big picture words for you both. Kimbrough and Pesquet working on the flight support equipment, moving some beams that were securing the IROSA to uh, the flight support equipment. There are several more bolts uh, still holding IROSA in place. The teams here will continue to evaluate the next steps, looking at the times and the consumables in, in suit. With bolts on the FSE and the lower IROSA until the six hour mark, and then we'll reassess. So that gives us just over 10 minutes to work those bolts. Uh, Toma. I have you at the crew lock bag to do a socket swap, and Shane, you are at crew lock bag number two to perform a socket swap as well. Okay. Good, Jenny. And just to clarify, you guys, we will uh, assess at six, but if you have extra input for us, of course, feel free to raise it. I mean, tomorrow, so either right now is a good time to break out or we just do this for 10 minutes and break out. I mean, 
I don't know what you want to do. You were still shooting for the 630 EVA, is that correct? Did you get that other idea? That's correct, Tama, 630. Any group to break out the point, because that's going to take us like 20 years, maybe 30 minutes to go back and clean up everything. And do yeah, I got to get an APFR as well. Is there any good breakout point if we start doing work and we have to stop in 10 or 15 minutes? Okay, with that, uh, we're very happy to clean up. We got a lot done today and we think this was a big success. So let's start our work site cleanup steps and then we will have you come inside and you're right, we're going to grab that APFR and clean up our wires high at the airlock as well. I copied your knee that we were cleaning up this work site uh, and uh, we'll be heading back to Yellow. A firm, stand by one for next steps. So at 5 hours 49 minutes into today's spacewalk, teams on the ground evaluating next steps with the crew on board who successfully moved some of the support beams that were holding the IROSA in place on the flight support equipment. There are more bolts that are securing it in place, plenty more to keep it nice and secure for the next spacewalk. Uh, looking at some of the next steps, they are uh, deciding to perform cleanup activities, uh, put all their tools in the respective uh, tool bags, and make their way back uh, to the airlock for ingress. Uh, on the next spacewalk, they'll come back to the flight support equipment and, re -addre and address some of the other bolts that are securing IROSA into place and begin the steps. We are ready to see you guys next steps. Uh, you can both retrieve your respective crew lock bags from the FSE and stow them on your BRT. and that's Mark. I'm uh, working on crew log bag one and straight on crew log bag two. Correct. A firm. And the crew proceeding with those cleanup activities. They'll uh, again readdress or, or address some of the bolts that are still securing the uh, IROSA to the flight support equipment on the next spacewalk. And that will remove it from the flight support equipment and allow them to move it over to the 4B channel for installation and deployment. In the meantime, though, they'll clean up from this work site and move in for ingress. That would be beautiful. They have time to look, really. Okay. Once you have your crew lock bags, Shane, you will be leading back to the airlock. Well, I have mine. I'm going to move, if you don't mind. Yep. Yeah. So I'll stand by. Are you my chair? Copy. Ground copies. Tomorrow I'm on the seat of cart. Copy you on the seat of cart. I'm working on the cloak bag now. BRT wet. Behind me, and I'm going to start my translation sharing behind you. Okay. Sounds good. So 
Right here. Tomas, as you follow Shane inboard, remember you will be pressing the inboard CETA brake release handles twice. Shane Kimbrough leading the way from the work, work site, uh, tailed very closely by Thomas Pesquet. Both of them in tow have crew lock bags or uh, equipment bags, tool bags that they'll be taking with them back into the airlock. They've completed their tasks for today, installing a new IROSA or solar array on the 2B channel and deploying it. They started some of the prep work for the work site on the other side of the Port 6 truss, the 4B work site, and they started to unbolt some of the beams that are securing the next IROSA, which will be installed on the 4B channel from the flight support equipment in preparation for some of the work on a future EVA, tentatively scheduled for June 25th to complete the installation of the 4B channel. Again, they are now making their way back into the airlock to complete today's spacewalk.
Maybe you want me to do clear that uh, that says data crossover. I can do it here. I'll go over the mark and then do that real quick. Sure, Tama. That sounds like a good plan for us. Get it in a good config. Yeah. Work. My right way is better. Black, black on black. On structure. Go ahead and connect. All right. If you won, it's better anchor hook, not if you two. Well, oh, three six five two journey. Check me on that, please. What's the one? Copy three six five two. You check me on that. That's a good number, Toma. Okay, thank you. On the Cedar Spur, Toma, Jenny. Ground copies. Okay, you want anchor hook back on three six five two, box black on black, and I'm gonna go ahead and check that change EV two anchor hook on three six five one box black on black. I retrieve my local tether and uh, my way to the other journey. We agree. That's a good config, Tama. Shane, we see you nearly back at the airlock. You'll be fair leading on airlock handrail five hundred. Copy, Shane. As a reminder, you'll be uh, removing the wire tie, which is holding the thermal cover in place and stowing it in your trash bag. Okay. Correction, I'm just hearing we can leave that wire tie in place. So in place with three twists on the handrail. Perfect. The airlock now, I'm going to go in first and hook up with the uh, safety tether or the waist tether, correct? AFIRM, your first step is to attach your waist tether to the airlock D ring extender waist tether uh, and check the hooks. And Jenny, I'm at the top of the CS pair making my way to the airlock. I copy, Tama. Shane Kimbrough already at the uh, hatch to the station's airlock. Inside is the uh, crew lock, and he'll be able to hook himself up with umbilicals. He'll be carrying that crew lock bag or the tool bag into the airlock with him. And he'll await for uh, Thomas Pesquet to come in right behind him. You see him coming into frame now. He'll take uh, the position of going in last and he'll have the responsibility of closing the thermal cover and the hatch. We're now a little more than six hours into today's spacewalk. I can do that. No problem. I'll give you my crew up back and I'll grab the uh, gear file. How about that? Okay, so Tama and Jimmy, for EV2, I have my waist tether on the airlock, waist tether closed and locked, um, all four hooks. Copy, Shane. That's a good load path back to the airlock.
Get on that bad deal, Doc. Okay, hand it in whenever you're ready. March. New York, they just came off tomorrow. Right? Air helmet, helmet uh, Erica lights just came off as well. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, we were just okay, about. Nice and easy. <laughs> just about to let you guys know. Uh, the helmet lights on Toma, yep. as Shane said, those are also off. We are not going to take the time to troubleshoot that now, obviously. We're just going to get no good config. Okay. Okay. I didn't get it. Yep. There we go. Okay, that's a good. I got it in the airlock now. Here comes your rat. Got it? All right, here I go. Okay. You're set. Jenny, do you want me to work on the APFO or just in at that point? Uh, Tomai, it's going to be your choice if you think you can get the APFR at this point with your your lights. You can do it. We're going to leave it up to you. It's kind of free floating, and you know, I don't, and it's a night pass now, so I don't think it's a good idea, Jenny. Okay, we're happy. My lights are not, are not uh, pointing in front of me, actually. They're pointing in yeah. the direction. We understand. Uh, that's fine with us. Let's move on to the tether config. Let me know when you're ready. Shane, you can turn your HECA off. Stand right. The config is going to be fun, too. So that's all connected. And the pre-lock bags are both attached to the airlock tomorrow. Yep, your um, six tether is behind your chain. And hook on your legs. Okay, and I'm gonna get my hacker here. Copy, Shane. Thirty seconds to handover. Copy, Shane. Thirty seconds to handover. Tomorrow, what do you want me to do? Uh, no, but you have your six tether behind your legs. So uh, you want me to come out? Uh, well, you can do just a 360 to your uh, to your uh, left shoulder, and I'll clear it. But to my left, here we go. Yeah. And you're wasted up now. Okay, so. Okay, so you come come out halfway. Okay. Out. Another temporary loss in video from the International Space Station. Those views you were seeing, the International Space Station, flying 271 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, just south off the coast of South Africa. As uh, Thomas Pesquet was entering into the hatch, you saw his camera assembly uh, start to be removed from the upper portion of his uh, extravehicular mobility unit. This was uh, a similar issue we saw with the suit on uh, Shane Kimbrough earlier in today's spacewalk. Pesquet was able to uh, use wire ties to secure the helmet assembly for the remainder of the spacewalk. Uh, now with that... Uh, a camera assembly coming off of Pesquet's uh, uh, EMU, or extravehicular mobility unit. He'll be ingressing the uh, airlock and performing the remainder of these uh, tasks uh, over audio. Okay, copy. You'll be attaching Shane's green hook to the aft external airlock D-ring, and I'll take your checks. Okay, green hook. Hey, from. Green hook. Don't fall on it, Shane, Oh, sorry. Oh, no worries. You still? This is Shane's green hook. Those two. Hello, Jenny, I don't think I've, I've seen my lights are just uh, hanging around. 
Okay. I got chains, green hook, you aft, yes, yes, aft, airlock, DA, both black on black, and the, the release unlocked. Copy, good checks. You can release Shane's yellow hook and attach it to your red reel. Okay, let's go. And Shane, we are pretty sure we caught it, but can you confirm your HECA is off? Okay, it is off for EV2. Copy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Shane's yellow hook on my red reel. A firm, and I'll take your checks. I'm sorry, it takes a little bit more time because every time I I uh, move my right swing around to wait for them to settle until I can see anything after that. Okay, Shane's yellow hook on my one green, sorry, red reel. Shane's yellow hook is closed black on black. Red reel is unlocked. Good checks. Attach your green hook to the forward external airlock D-ring. It's done, marked black on black and the uh, and, uh, reel is unlocked. Go ahead and retrieve my yellow, I guess. A firm, retrieve your yellow hook and stow it on your mini workstation and then turn your HECA off. Green hook should be on the aft external D ring. Black on black. A firm. So as I said, it needs locks black on black. And now I'm going to go ahead and retrieve my yellow hook. Uh, and my yellow hook on my green reel and put it on my mirror station. Correct. Done. Okay, that's a good tether config. I'm out. Then you can uh, ingress a little bit more. One on. Oh. So I'm going to go ahead and ingress, uh, Jenny. Uh, are you happy with that? I understand the crew lock bags are already in the airlock. Um, in and forward, just be. Toma, I'll also get you to turn your HECA off. Nice and slow, Toma. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, I'll, Shane, I'll try to go once you get in. Maybe Shane can do it for me once I'm inside. Understood. You can ingress the airlock. Those final checks before entering the uh, airlock uh, were just to make sure that the tether configuration was as expected. Everything checks out. So you see Thomas Pesquet going in feet first uh, into the airlock. That puts him in a position to close the hatch on the other side, as well as a thermal cover. He'll pull that closed, uh, and they'll begin the uh, repressurization sequence. The official end of today's spacewalk uh, will be when repressurization of the airlock begins. I think there's something that blocks me. Let's 
Right now it's your right leg there, Nucky. Or again. Oh, there's something that fools me. Yeah. That is something that fools me. It's called a local feather. <laughs> All right. That'll do it. That'll do it. Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> Well done, both Shane and Tomas. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the thermal cover. A firm, you can close the hatch thermal cover. Verify the forward hatch pit pin is engaged. Forward hatch pit pin is engaged. Copy. Close the thermal cover. Attach the hook to the magnetic plate D-ring and cinch strap until snug. More fun with lights. <laughs> Understood. Hey, for AV2, can I hook up my FDU? Checking. Hey, firm Shane, you can hook up your SCU to DCM. I need a adjustable always on the uh, thermal cover D-ring. Confirm that the magnets are non-magnetic. Uh, and I see six white lines, sorry, six black lines. Copy. The hook is on the magnetic plate D-ring. The strap is snug, and you see six lines you can attach to your SCU tomorrow. And AVT is connected to SCU, but it's not locking. Copy, Shane. You say you're connected, but you cannot lock the SCU. Correct. Yeah, I tried pulling up on the hose a little bit, like you normally do. No luck. Copy, Shane. We're talking it.
NASA astronaut uh, Megan MacArthur standing by in the equipment lock on the other side of the hatch that she's looking through are the two spacewalking astronauts of today. NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough and ESA astronaut European Space Agency astronaut Tama Piskay. Copy, Tama. You're on your SCU. And can you lock your SCU? They're working through the ingress procedures now, making sure all their suits are hooked up to the International Space Station. Then they'll begin the repressurization sequence, which will be the official end time of today's spacewalk. Now at uh, six hours and almost 19 minutes. I am not able to lock it yet. This has been the same problem the last EVA and, um, and the OSV as well, but um, eventually it locks this time, but this is not locking. I'm going to try. Okay. Copy, Shane. Pulling on the hose, especially on the lever. Oh, yeah. I'm doing all that. What's going on with you? Mm -hmm. We'll have words for you guys soon. I hear a click, but it doesn't. It just doesn't. Relaxed. Uh, no need, Jenny. Just got it. I'm just got it. Nice. try. Okay, copy. You just got it. Oh. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for being patient. Okay, so understanding both of your SCUs are locked. Hey, real quick before we go, um, the flight and Capcom and all the other dads in the room, happy Father's Day. Thanks for working with us uh, on a Sunday. And likewise, we feel the same. Thank you for working with us. This was a, a great effort. You guys did fantastic out there. Also, congrats to the team. Great job. All right, now a note for both of you as we continue to bring you inside. A TCB setting of eight max cold minimizes time for SCU cooling. With that, you can both switch your waters to off, OFF, forward, and expect an H2O is off message. Copy. Do not close hatch until EMU water off for two minutes. We are timing. As astronaut Shane Kimbrough uh, wishing a happy Father's Day to the teams here in Mission Control Houston, all contributing uh, to a successful spacewalk today, installing and deploying a brand new solar array on the 2B power channel on the port 6 truss of the International Space Station. The duo are now inside the crew lock going through the procedures uh, to uh, the ingress procedures to repressurize to the same pressure as the International Space Station all the way up to 14 pounds per square inch and re-enter the uh, International Space Station officially ending today's spacewalk. Toma, you can verify the outer hatch is clear of hardware and the handle position is per the hatch decal. The outer hatch is clear, then the handle position, up to the hatch decal. Copy, we'll hold for... And now it is. We will hold for 30 more seconds.
All right, there is our two-minute timer. Toma, you can close and lock the EV hatch. Yeah, uh, cool bag. Yeah, it's cool. I'll move it out of the Getting some last-minute views from the inside of the crew lock. This is the helmet camera of Thomas Pesquet. It says job to close the hatch. Uh, once the hatch is secure, we'll undergo a series of other steps before repressurizing the vestibule. Copy. EV hatch is closed and locked. Shane, on the UIA, check oxygen, EMU 1 and 2 valves. Two of them are open. Both oxygen, EMU 1 and 2 are open. Switch power, EV 1 and 2 on. EV1 on, power EV2 on with two lights, 18.6 volts. Copy LEDs on and 18.6 volts, that's a good number. On your DCM, switch power to SCU, expect a warning tone. Copy. With that, I will hand it over to your suit IV friends to continue bringing you back inside. Well done. Uh, great job, Jenny. Great job, everyone. I think it's great success tonight. You have a nice uh, roll out and roll, and uh, looking forward to that on the second one next time. Okay, Tama and Shane, uh, great work. Ready to bring you guys back in. You can take your O2 actuator. Copy, Megan. O2 actuator going to press. O2 actuator press EV2. Working on it. Press EV1. Hey, copy EV1 and EV2 have O2 actuator to press. Shane, you can, or sorry, Tamal, you can check the EV hatch MPEV is closed. The hatch MPEV is closed, Megan. Okay, I'm going to throttle off to Norm. Uh, if you need me to slow down or stop, give me hand signal uh, as well as verbal in case we can't hear you. When we get to five, Megan, we're going to stop it, right? Affirmative. When uh, you get to four, you should expect an alert tone. And when you get to five, uh, we're going to take the IV hatch equalization valve back to off. Copy. With that, uh, we're hearing it now, a uh, 
repressurization of the airlock, the crew lock on the other side of the hatch that you're seeing from this view is underway. That stops the clock at 6 hours and 28 minutes for a total elapsed time for today's spacewalk. The official end time is 1.10 p.m. Central Time. Repressurization is looking good. We're a little more than 2 pounds per square inch. Just like when we depressurized the crew lock, we'll stop at about five pounds per square inch and perform a leak check, make sure everything looks good before uh, proceeding to repress all the way up to match the pressure of the International Space Station, just a little more than 14 pounds per square inch. Show at, at 3 PSI, you should expect an alert tone at four. Okay, we've paused here at 5 PSI. We're going to wait two minutes for the crew lock pressure to stabilize. As planned, we're now performing a leak check at 5 pounds per square inch. Make sure the pressure holds before continuing back up to the station pressure, just a little bit more than 14 pounds per square inch. Come on, Shane, we're waiting two minutes for the pressure to stabilize, and then we'll do a one-minute uh, leak check. Copy, thanks, Megan. Copy.
Mr. Monchain, we had a good leak check. Uh, you can switch your glove heaters off. Glove heaters are off. Glove heaters are off, CB2. Your gloves for contamination. I think all good for you on dog air, CB2. Okay, you can take your O2 actuator to IV. To, to IV if you want. IV, EV2. Okay, you both have O2 actuator to IV. I'm going to take the IV hatch equalization valve uh, throttling to norm. You can expect an alert tone. Okay, copy. And we had a good leak check at five pounds per square inch. Everything looked good uh, from the crew lock side and from the equipment lock side where our three USOS astronauts are waiting. From left to right, we have uh, Mark Vandehei, NASA astronaut, Aki Hoshide, JAXA astronaut from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. And uh, in the background there, Megan MacArthur, NASA astronaut, who's the lead uh, talking with the crew on the other side. Uh, Shane Kimbrough and uh, Thomas Pesquet. Repressurization again is underway. We're coming up on seven pounds per square inch. We got some statistics for you for today's uh, six hour and 20 minute spacewalk. It was the 240th uh, spacewalk in support of International Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades. Started at 6.42 a.m. Central Time today, ended at 1.10. It was the eighth spacewalk conducted this year, 2021, the fourth of Pesquet's career, totaling 20 26 hours and 15 minutes in his career. It was the eighth for Kimbrough, totaling 52 hours and 43 minutes. It puts him on the 11th of all-time EVA uh, total hours uh, in his career. Uh, today's spacewalk again lasted six hours and 28 minutes. And of course, all of the spacewalks for the 240 EVAs of support of ISS assembly, maintenance, and upgrades total 63 days, zero hours, and 56 minutes. In addition, this was the third spacewalk for Expedition 65, totaling at 21 hours and two minutes. Repressurization continuing to look good. We're now a little bit more than nine pounds per square inch. Again, we're heading to just a little bit more than 14. Coming up on a little more than 13 pounds per square inch, now exceeding. Come on, Shane, when crew lock CPDT is around zero, you can expect an alert tone. Copy, Megan. Copy.
Okay, guys, I'm getting ready to open the hatch. Be advised that uh, we have a couple of Delta steps just to document uh, uh, Shane's helmet ERCA config, so um, it'll be a little different than normal. Uh, we'll be documenting both of your uh, ERCA configs, so just bear with us. We'll get you into the edits and out of your suits as soon as we can. Okay, thank you for the up again. That was crazy. Yeah. Very proud of that, of that uh, my uh, my guy wearing yours, uh, Shane. Oh, heck yeah, man! That was amazing. I hope they take pictures. It's red. It's you attached, like let's see that. You know, as I was starting to translate or something, I was like, oh crap! Safety tethers around my head. <laughs> you know, I just kept seeing it all day. <laughs> so I was like, oh no. All right, hatch is coming up. Nice. That was like spot on. Spot on. Crew lock pressure has come up to match that of the International Space Station. A little more than 14 pounds per square inch. Megan MacArthur working to open the hatch while Kimbrough and Pesquet uh, uh, recall some of the events of their six hour and 28 minute spacewalk. The hatch is now open. Okay, for you. Where is it? I'll hand it hook everything. Okay. There you go. You're fixed. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're still attached to me, though. I'll hand the hook these two. Okay. 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 Wait. Okay, you're free. Alright, I'm holding here. They're taking pictures. To the Space Channel 1, looking for you to do the comm config in step 4 and uh, call. Okay, stand by. We'll uh, reconfigure the comm, let you know when the crew is no longer hot mic. Copy, thanks. And uh, Shannon Tamar, any glove contamination? Um, so. JAXA astronaut Aki Hoshide uh, detailing uh, some the helmet camera assembly on Shane Kimbrough's spacesuit. For those that tuned in during the duration of the spacewalk, the uh, helmet camera assembly came loose during the spacewalk, and with the help of Toma Pesquet, was resecured to Shane Kimbrough's suit using some copper wire ties. You can sort of see them in this frame. Uh, and it allowed Shane Kimbrough to proceed with the remainder of his tasks, including uh, getting the uh, solar array in finally installed and eventually deployed on the 2B power channel. They're now detailing uh, the helmet camera assembly so uh, engineers here in Mission Control Houston can evaluate uh, the helmet camera assembly on both of the suits. We gotta go ahead and do some deconfig of your helmet right now. You can't see it, uh, but we're uh, disconnecting stuff. While the crew inside the International Space Station details the helmet camera assembly with some photographs, uh, we did get confirmation that the mics on the spacesuits themselves have been turned off, so we won't be hearing uh, Shane Kimbrough's voice or Thomas Pesquet's voice uh, for the remainder of uh, our coverage today. As the three USO astronauts continue to uh, take photos for evaluation again here on the ground.
flanking Aki Hoshide that you see at the center of your screen to the left, uh, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, and to the right, NASA astronaut Megan MacArthur. The first step uh, for uh, the uh, getting our two spacewalking crew members back from the crew lock into the equipment lock is to remove uh, a piece of equipment called the SAFER. It's the simplified aid for EVA rescue, essentially a jet pack that can be used uh, if the uh, station astronauts were to become untethered during the spacewalk at any point. But of course, we heard throughout the duration of today's spacewalk, constant checks on the tether configuration, make sure they were constantly attached to the outside of the station at all times. Another handover in some of our video coming down from the space station as we hand over our tracking and data relay satellites, geosynchronous satellites that are providing those video feeds uh, live from the International Space Station. Meanwhile, the Orbit 2 team still monitoring uh, the uh, procedures to get our two spacewalking astronauts out of their suits. They were in the suits for the duration of the six hour and 28 minute spacewalk today. In addition to some other time for pre-breathing exercises where they were uh, breathing 100% oxygen to allow them to get the suits down in pressure to less than five pounds per square inch. You see Kimbrough there on the right, NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough. They'll get him uh, configured out of the suit by removing his helmet and gloves. In the meantime, what you just saw for Shane Kimbrough, uh, they'll repeat those steps for ESA astronaut Tomat Pesquet in the back there, pulling him out and doing the same photographic survey of the helmet camera assembly uh, before removing that safer unit, the simplified aid for re EVA rescue, and then putting him on the right side opposite of Shane Kimbrough inside the equipment lock. Some congratulations inside the airlock from J uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut uh, Aki Hoshide over to NASA astronaut Shane Kimbrough on the left. He again uh, completed a successful spacewalk today with Thomas Pesquet, who again is going through that photographic survey. They're taking the same photos of the helmet camera assembly for analysis on the ground. Kimbrough and Pesquet today completed a six hour and 28 minute spacewalk to install a brand new solar array on the 2B power channel. That is the first of the planned six uh, solar arrays that are planned for augmenting the station's power supply. Each of the IROSAs uh, produce 20 kilowatts of, uh, will produce about 20 kilowatts of energy uh, being pulled into each respective uh, power channel and being augmented still with the legacy solar arrays uh, continuing to draw power. In total, once all six uh, uh, IROSAs are installed on different power channels of the International Space Station, they will provide a total of about 120 kilowatts of energy supplemented with the continuous draw of power from the legacy uh, arrays. In total, the International Space Station solar arrays in a new augmented configuration uh, will be able to generate 215 kilowatts of energy. This is needed for continuing uh, research uh, and scientific experiments, technology development, and of course continuing our efforts to build a low Earth orbit economy with some future uh, modules, including commercial modules, headed to the International Space Station. The 
will work today uh, kicks off that augmentation plan with the su successful deployment of the first solar array on the 2B power channel. Kimbro and Pesquet performed a number of tasks to get uh, to get ahead on some of the procedures necessary for installing another solar array, which is also on the outside of the International Space Station, currently located on some flight support equipment uh, on the station's truss. They removed some beams to get it ready for removal from that flight support equipment, uh, but ultimately uh, they're going to move it and install it onto another power channel, the 4B power channel. That will be conducted on a future spacewalk right now, tentatively scheduled for June 25th, this upcoming Friday.
and uh, one of those periodic views, losing views uh, from the International uh, Space Station should be regaining them shortly. But in the meantime, we did have a successful six hour and 20 eight-minute spacewalk started at 6.42 a.m. Central Time, concluding at 1.10 p.m. Central Time. Again, the two astronauts successfully installed and deployed uh, a new solar array on the 2B power channel to augment the power being drawn into that channel, and they started some of the prep work for uh, continuing the upgrades of uh, that are planned for augmenting the power system as a whole for the International Space Station. That second uh, solar array is on the International Space Station now and will be moved over from the flight support equipment, which is currently on the truss, over to its new home on the 4B channel where it will be installed and deployed. Currently planned for a spacewalk coming up this Friday, June 25th. Uh, right now the plan is for Tama Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough uh, to perform the and complete uh, that set uh, of the spacewalk. Uh, the teams here in Mission Control and, uh, and the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston will evaluate uh, the forward plan given today's events uh, and uh, we'll make an announcement. Please follow us on nasa.gov to find out the latest uh, on that particular spacewalk. With the new solar array deployed and this spacewalk complete, that'll do it from us here in Mission Control Houston.